Marco. I know, I know. You guys thought I was asleep or something because it took me too long to. Uh, it took me too long to um, get started, but that's because I I'm, I mysteriously had to use the potty right as I was about to go live. Ah uh, no. Well, it happens. It happens sometimes. And uh, the good news is you guys are all such loyal goons that you stayed and you waited for me. And I appreciate that. And you guys, oh, look at you. 51 of you have already clicked like on the video. I love that. Um, okay, here, let me make sure this is all set up nice, nicely. I, I uh, am actually a little bit late because, well, I'm not late. Fuck y'all. It's 7.06. Um, but the reason I was late start changing it from this screen to this screen was because I was having coffee with my, uh, some, with my family, with two of my relatives. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been trying to, I've been trying to figure out if, um, you guys want me to talk about my personal life in any capacity or not. I've been trying not to, because I'm trying to focus on like the niche and whatever and not get too off, off topic, off track. Um, but yeah, I guess before I go further with that, you tell me what y'all want. Uh, Flip Warbucks, what up? He says, any edited content on the way? You have no idea. I have a video that is my biggest video ever coming out soon. I've been teasing this video since the beginning of the year when I started working on it. I've done live streams talking about it. I've told you guys about it. I've given little hints and teasers and clues, and it hasn't come out yet. It is coming out. It is my biggest video, not necessarily in terms of length, but maybe as well. I'm in the process right now where the entire script is finished and all that I actually have left to do is to film the, and what I mean, what I mean by script is, it's not a script in the sense of like, here's how it's gonna go. It's basically, I went and captured all of the footage of like my infiltration with the hidden camera, all the Zoom calls that I snuck in on. Like this is really a combination of all of my, MLM videos you've seen in the past where some of them were in person, some of them were just Zoom calls that I infiltrated. This one is both. Um, and now the, the script, what I mean by script is, is I take all of that footage and I say, okay, this is, you know, this is a moment that I want to make a commentary on, or this is a moment that I want to debunk or something like that. And so I have the clip and then in my document, I write, okay, you know, here's why this point is nonsense or, or whatever it is that I want to say, right? Or here's the information that shows the scam behind this element of the company, whatever, whatever. And I, I have completed that. The first draft of that script was over, th let me see, make sure I don't misquote you, was over 13,000 words because I was writing it exactly as I would say it. So I was, instead of doing jot notes or bullet points, I was writing it in a conversational way where it was as though just the reason I did that is so I could read through the whole thing with a timer going and see how long it took me to read through the whole thing to get a better estimate of how long the video would be. Right now, I have about 30 minutes of footage, like actual infiltration footage that I wanted to make a comment on and all of the script took me an hour to read. So if I combine all that together, the video would be an hour and a half long. I'm trying to cut that down to a third of that length and keep it, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, something like that. And I know on the last stream we said, if as long as the video is good, it doesn't really matter the length. And I do agree, but I would like to keep it under an hour. And um, so now I've, I've gone over that. I've done a couple passovers of the, uh, or pass throughs rather, of the script and cut it down. And uh, there's some more scenes that uh, of the footage where I'm like, you know, this is sort of a repeat of the previous point that this guy made, so maybe I can cut this. And I am confident that I'll be able to cut down a significant portion of it and still make it the amazing video that I know it's going to be. Um, and worst, worst, worst case scenario, all the footage that gets cut for this just becomes part two of the, of the series. So this video that I've, that I'm talking about is, of course, infiltrating a pyramid scheme, Primerica. Now, Primerica sent me a cease and desist letter back in April because um, they heard about me making this video. They heard about me working on it, and they want to stop me 
from putting it out. And I will not adhere to that. I am going to put the video out. And uh, you see that Donald goal above my head. I found a lawyer in Edmonton where I live uh, who, after I got that cease and desist, I just thought, you know, there's a saying, you know, an ounce of prevention or whatever it is. What the fuck? A spoonful of prevention is worth an ounce of the cure or whatever, right? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure. You get my fucking point. It's better to be prepared. It's better to prevent something than have to deal with it after the fact. So I found a lawyer in Edmonton who is a young guy, and he was actually, he's a fan of the videos that I make. He's, he's seen what I do, and he wants to help. So he said that he would be able to help, um, but of course I told him I don't have you know, I'm not doing that thing again that I did the first time around where I got, you know, into some legal situation where I had to retain a lawyer for $10,000. That, that, at that time, completely wiped out all the money that I had. That was all the money that I had. I had finally made it to a point in my life where I'd saved up $10,000, and that was the most money I'd ever had. Uh, actually, that's not true. That was, the second, that was the second most money I'd ever had in my life. And uh, it was rare that I ever had that in my account without it having to be spent on something the next day. And basically the next day I had to spend it on the, the, the lawyer. But the way these things go in a civil case, the other party, if you have a lawyer, the other party can just keep demanding um, discovery, you know, make you submit more documents, keep delaying it, keep making your lawyer send emails back and forth, scheduling, I'm on vacation, bullshit like that. And every time something like that happens, you're getting billed. And eventually, it's just big bank takes little bank. Who has the bigger pile of poker chips? Well, of course, any MLM company that uh, I'm up against, they probably have thousands of people that are putting money into the system every single month. And you know, I do have 60,000 subs, but I don't have 60,000 subs who are each spending, you know, a uh, hundred plus dollars a month on my, on my YouTube channel. And even if I did, that 60,000 people would probably still be less than what the MLM company has. So I had to figure out a better way. And this um, lawyer I found, he said that he was uh, willing to assist me in what's called a limited scope basis, where basically I would be representing myself and doing most of the work by myself. I also bought a book about how to represent, represent yourself, but he would be there. He would basically be, I'm basically paying a lesser retainer of $2,500 for him to give me unbundled services. So I would do most of the stuff. I would show up to trial by myself if it got to the point of having a trial. And um, he would basically just, in exchange for that $2,500, he would, uh, g give me like 10 hours basically of his time where like billable time. So 250 an hour, basically times 10 hours where I could have him look over documents that I produced to see if everything was, you know, filed in the correct way so that when I go to court, it's, I don't have any problems. Uh, talk to him on the phone, you know, let him know here's where I'm at in the process. Uh, is there anything I'm missing? Just general advice, etc. Can you send me resources? Maybe there's a, uh, some case law on this type of defamation complaint or copyright claim that they're that they're saying uh, that I that I can use to to back up my own case in the in the trial. So that's what I am uh, looking to do now. Honestly, if I if I you know if this was a fantasy world and I could just snap my fingers, I would say I need ten thousand dollars. Because 2,500 of that would be to cover this lawyer. Um, set, the rest of it would just go towards debt that I have. Um, and that, that would be really life-changing. You know, there have been a couple times in my life where I've been completely debt-free. And I've always, I like to think I've always been good with my money. And, uh, you know, I paid off my car coming up on two years ago. And that was a huge thing for me because, you know, car debt is one of the biggest, biggest debts. And then last year, I had this whole thing with taxes where I was like redoing, redoing my taxes for the previous four years and it resulted in me having to pay like 10K and I wasn't doing the MLM videos so I wasn't making as much and uh, I just started using my credit card to cover, you know, to balance it out and you know how that shit goes. So, um, but I'm very close, you know, if $10,000 fell out of the sky right now, 
I'd be a very happy camper because it would mean that I have no debt and um, I have like a good thing going with this YouTube channel and I would uh, be able to start like saving for my future. You know, I'm 27 years old and that would just be a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, there's 117 people watching. I don't know, man. Let's, let's do some math. Let's do, let's do some numbers. Let's crunch some numbers. Let's pay some bills. Uh, but yo, so long, long, long way to answer the question from Flip Warbucks. Yes, edited content is on the way. Yes. What's up to all my members in the chat, all the mods? What's up, everybody? I'm seeing your names here. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Um, Jared, love the new profile picture of you and Meredith. Uh, Beyond says, drop into the Discord after stream. I'll do a live read of my ongoing fan fiction, which uh, has now been included, has now been expanded to include Bob Hollis. So this is Beyond's uh, fan fiction of Losing Fortunes Radio, Scott, Peter. I believe I'm mentioned in it. Can't wait. Don't let your limited beliefs keep you from liking this live stream. So true. Thumbs up the team. What's up, everybody? Okay, I'm, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. It's Terry Wrangling time. So true. Where is the button? Do you like me? <laughs> nope, not that one. Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. Yep. Okay, I'm just reading your comments before I move on to this next thing. Um, Marco, why haven't you answered my Instagram text? My bad. I have so many res uh, message requests in there, and I've been kind of lacking on that, so I, I, I will go through it sometime this week and, and check those out. Um, Joseph says, quickly, everyone take responsibility and donate $1 for Marco. Exactly, exactly. You get it. You get it. Um, Goon Court. We could go to Goon Court. We should start putting different mods up on the chopping block in Goon Court uh, and then, like, basically hold them ransom, do, like, a telethon and, like, say, okay, if by the end of this timer we don't get this much money, this person is no longer a mod. That'd be ruthless. The Ming Dynasty. Ali says, all hell Emperor Marco. Goon Emperor Marco. Yes, Ali, and congrats on you getting your um, cult member shirt in the mail. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. Updates on Scott and Peter? No, except for uh, Scott going on Glenn's channel again, interestingly. Hey, Beyond, thank you. Beyond says, glad you're taking... The potential for legal issues serious, seriously. Also, send me that script, LOL. I shall, I shall, I shall. Thank you. Okay. Can you get a look at my soundboard? For sure. It looks like this. It is the Elgato Stream Deck. And as you can see, um, it has all the different scenes on there. I press this, it goes to that. I press this, it goes to that. I press, uh, I press this goes to that so it's pretty cool pretty cool all right thumbs up the stream y'all what thumbs up the team because only 81 of you have out of 114 and i'm gonna pull up this next th the subject of tonight's stream that we're gonna look at which i regret that i ha didn't do it earlier but the truth is i forgot about it yeah i forgot about it glad you're taking the potential for legal issues seriously also send me that script lol. Yes, I shall, I shall, I shall, I shall, I shall. Um, how do I hide? I'm so confused right now. Uh-oh, who goes there? Scott Mingles. What do you say? We appreciate you, Marco. Thank you, Scott Mingles. Appreciate that. Um, Uh-oh, who goes there? Elena, let's get this shiz going. Okay. Thank you, Elena. Okay. I'm pulling up sources right now so for us to look at. All right. I forgot about this, and I, I meant to do a stream on this like some time ago, but I just forgot. I was sent this in the mail. So if you guys ever want to send me mail or send me like, uh, there was one stream we reacted to, uh, we opened up a USANA um, 
A USAN. Oh, whoa. I just learned something right now about YouTube. YouTube has a new, a new way for me to arrange the chat on my screen. I can go, I can sort by top chat. I can sort by live chat, which I don't know what the difference is. And I can sort by fan funding, which only shows me people who dropped super chats, super stickers, channel memberships, gifting, etc. So that way, if the chat gets really crazy in the future, or let's say I have like, I'm doing a debate and there's a thousand people watching and I, I can't possibly read the chat, I can just sort by fan funding. That way, I, I will only see the chat of the people who have like dropped bag. And that way, um, you know, it's like easier to manage, but interesting. Anyways, somebody sent me this in the mail. If you want to send me shit in the mail, not shit, but if you want to send me stuff in the mail, just ask me and I'll give you a, an address to send it to. I'll, I'll send it on Instagram. I was sent this in the mail. It's a South Asian magazine called Drishti. Okay. As you can see, I mean, some of the words on the front of this, I don't even know what they mean. Vesaki, uh, Panj Takht. Is that someone's name? No idea. Uh, this is like an Indian magazine. And on the front of this, this is April 2023. So this is relatively new, two months ago. The guy on the front of this magazine right here is named Terry Joe Hall. And the cover story, or I guess the middle of the, whatever you call it, from rags to riches and still moving up right here. And you can see his big WFG ring on the picture. So because I'm the best and, I, and I'm a genius, I was like, okay, I don't want to just be doing this the whole stream. I don't want to be going like, okay, here's the page. Let me read to you what it says. So because I am the absolute goat, Marco. I found the online version of the article, which is right here. And it includes, yes, I know, I know. And it includes the pictures from the magazine. So you'll be able to basically look at the virtual version of the magazine while I am looking at the physical copy. What is this? Ten, okay, never mind. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Terry Joe Hall is the most diverse, diverse, how do I say this? He, every picture I find of this guy, he looks massively different than the previous picture. Okay, here's a picture I found of him. This is uh, on uh, Twitter. This is from March 2018. It says, living the dream. Thank you, WFG. I'm so happy that I build a big team champions. Building millionaire. Now building millions dollar club. So English, you know, we're not too worried about it. But this is Terry Johal. Not quite 10 grand, but the rest is saved for you on stick.com. Chris Proctor, wow, hilarious. And stick.com, that's an Eric Worre reference. Love it, thank you. Uh, I think I know who that was. Is it David? No, it wasn't, okay. V. Elizabeth White, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Okay, so this is, this is our boy Terry Johal. All right, um, let me see if he has more pictures. He's not in that picture. But I know this guy. His name is Gurbal Deep, I think. And I'm not just making that up. I know that sounds like something I would say just to be racist. It's not. I do, I do believe that that gentleman's name is Gurbal Deep. Um, wow, look at this amazing picture. Again, this is what I mean. I do not see one white person in this picture. This is a great example, in my opinion, of how... Oh, there's Terry right there in the front. Of how MLMs target minority communities. There's what? One, two, three. How many in this row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, maybe there's maybe 80 people in this room, if I had to guess, just eyeballing it. Not one of them is a white person. All minorities looking for a better way. Super haram, super, super shameful, in my opinion. And I've got lots of comments on my WFG videos from people in the Sikh community and the Punjabi community saying, like, we don't rep these guys. Like, these guys... We do not fuck with this. So here's another picture of Terry Joe Hall right here. He looks so different. He looks so different. I, I swear, earlier I was thinking, like, is there more than one Terry Joe Hall? To the end of your life, and that Fucking Ed Milet. I swear. Look, here's another one of Terry Joe Hall. It looks so different. How much did they all pay? How much did they all pay? I demand to know, Terry. All right, so... Terry Joe Hall has this 
magazine article, whatever, that's been written about him. In Drishti, and I haven't even gone through this yet because I was saving it for stream, and then I put it in like a pile of shit people have sent me, and I completely forgot about it. So, uh, by the way, thumbs up the stream, please, everyone. Thumbs up the thing. Thumbs up the thing. Panda says, system brings the people, buddy. So true. That's Panda's favorite quote. And, uh... Uh oh, new merch order! New merch order from alwaysmarcomerch.com! Who is it? Devin! Yes, congrats, Devin! Congrats and thank you, Devin, for making a purchase from alwaysmarcomerch.com. I'll put the link in the chat. If you want to get. Oh shit, I'm not wearing one of my Pyramid Scheme shirts. Fuck, I'm an idiot. All good. All good. Okay. Um, thank you guys. Joseph has sent mail before. This is true. Joseph sent me a Drake shirt, uh, an OVO shirt. Um, top chat is filtered. YouTube hides some of the messages. Interesting. Um, okay. I'm reading your comments. Jet skiing in a suit. Yeah, yeah, I never even put that together that he's on a boat wearing a full suit. <laughs> Imagine him actually like wakeboarding, but he's in the suit. That's some pimp shit. Honestly, I would respect that. If he was actually like in the water, but with the suit on and like so confident that he was not going to fall in because he was going to stay like above water on the skis or the wakeboard or whatever. I can't tell you how much respect I would have for that. That would actually be gangster shit. Imagine he just doesn't get a drop on him. That's amazing. Okay. Um, if the chat is bugging, just refresh the ting. Okay, and thumbs up the ting. So we're going to check out Drishti, Terry Johal, uh, from Regs to Riches, and still moving up this again. Here we go. Let's read. And I'm going to see if it I, – I, I'm sure it is the same in the book as it is uh, on, on the site. And if there's any discrepancies, I'll show you the difference. Here we go. Okay, it is the same. So here's what it looks like in the book. I'm going to show you the first page. Terry Joe Hall, From Rags to Riches and Still Moving Up by J.M. Lee. All right, let's read, shall we? Can you guys see that? Let me zoom in a bit. Flashback 21 years ago, Terry Joe Hall was laid off from IBM due to the bursting of the dot-com bubble. He, has fi he was 50 years old then, bankrupt, and knew nothing about the financial industry. Flash forward to 2023, Terry, now almost 70 years old, is a millionaire and not slowing down his upward propulsion. <laughs> now financially savvy, he talks about how to help people fulfill their dreams outside the box rather than the run-of-the-mill mediocrity of enacting one's dream. Okay. And then there's him in his office with all of these senior marketing director, executive marketing director, WFG awards. And mind you, these awards mean nothing. They are just produced by a third party awards, online awards store. Matter of fact, somebody actually sent me the link, I, but I can't remember what platform they sent me it on, Discord or Instagram. They sent me a link to the Instagram or to the site that actually makes their awards for them. These awards are just, they're not, they don't, anyone could make these. Anyone could print these. And then a picture of Paul McCartney behind him. I'm guessing they're friends. Most people think they only need insurance after they die, Terry said. In fact, insurance involves all things we do in life. Saving money in the bank, RRSP, a, t a TFSA, and when it's time to, make the mon to take the money out, each one falls under different laws. So have you ever seen a person who is just an insurance salesman uh, you know, talking about rags to riches, I haven't, but let's go on. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. You can also save money inside an insurance policy, contribute the money, and let the money grow. Terry reiterates that insurance is a living benefit. We sell life insurance. It is a living benefit in North America that is no longer available in the UK. Is that true? I don't know. You can save and have insurance to protect your family if something goes wrong. An insurance benefit works both ways. The early demise of a person or if one lives too long. How does one live too long? I'm sure I have no idea, but perhaps we'll find out one, way, one day. 
By the way, after this Terry Joe Hall segment of the magazine, there is an entire, this has to be a paid segment because there's like multiple pages of, look, it says WFG success stories of the top 56. And it shows a profile on 56 different people and their own mini regs to riches Terry Joe Hall story. Okay, here's the next page of the magazine. Oh no, this is the one I showed you already. Next page looks like this with some of the pictures we've already seen on the site and some that I'm not sure if they're on there. Okay, let's keep going. Either way, it is a benefit. Blah, 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 blah. By educating consumers, they learn how beneficial an insurance policy is. Unfortunately, the financial institutions. So this is basically the same pitch as what you would see in one of their offices, in my opinion. They are telling you basic information about um, insurance and the government doesn't teach it to you and school doesn't teach it to you. And I'm sure he's going to end up talking about the great opportunity to join the business afterwards. Here we go. I've been living here in Canada for 47 years and the government never knocked on my door to teach me how to pay the right amount of taxes, Terry declares. See, look how different he looks in this picture on the right. How, does, how is that the same guy? There's a book written by a CPA called The 10 Secrets Revenue Canada Doesn't Want You to Know. It elaborates on the secrecy of Revenue Canada and it taught me not to pay my taxes blindly. Most people do not know anything about leveraging in Canada. If you buy a $50,000 car, the leverage is 50 dollars per month. Buy a million dollar house with a $300,000 deposit. Okay. If your leverage is a hundred dollars a month, you can get $20,000 at 6% from the bank and then invest the 20,000. This education is teaching you how to make your money, how to make money work for you. Let me think about this for a second. A $50,000 car, the leverage is $50 a month. Buy a million dollar house with a $300,000 depo deposit. If your leverage is a hundred a month, who knows what the fuck he's talking about here. Um, 21 years ago, Terry didn't know this either until his friend Bupinder Chima mentioned WFG to him. There, Terry realized they offer a full training system. There is no prerequisites, no university degree or resume. Red flag. They provide a training and self-improvement program that prepares you for your journey into entrepreneurship. See, we're slowly eking our way into from, from being... You know, thus far, what he said has been rooted in reality. Now we're eking our way into just the nonsense. For your Some legal fees, hopefully you'll be able to use it for something else. Thank you, Jan Sproul. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Jan. You are the goat. If it was 21 years old, he's not almost 70. He is 70, 71, <laughs> whatever. Uh, why does it say SMD on his wall? SMD does not mean suck my... In this case, it means senior marketing director, and it is a uh, rank in WFG. What award shall we make for Marco? Top goon, the emperor. All right. Just start an LLC, and you can get a $10 million business loan the same day. <laughs> yeah. There's literally TikToks that make fun of this. Like, instead of going to McDonald's, take that $5 and buy it. go buy an LLC. Just so ridiculous. Listen to me. I, I, I'm about to say something that doesn't bring me joy to say, okay? Life is hard. There is no secret. There is no magical way to get rich. Do not let your guard down just because it seems like everyone is losing their minds. I never bought an NFT in my fucking life. I had cryptocurrency. All of the crypto I had was gifted to me. I never once ever paid for cryptocurrency. I didn't understand it, and thus I didn't risk my, my hard-earned money on it. Same thing with multi-level marketing. You guys, no, no sane, rational, average person has even the faintest hope of wrapping their head around an MLM compensation plan and actually following it and being able to derive a sensible, uh, you know, an idea that it is a reasonable thing to do. Between the prices of stuff, which translate to how much volume they're worth, which translate to how many points they're worth, which translates to how much commission you're eligible for, which translates to the actual amount of money you get back, which uh, also affects the uh, you know, bonuses you may or may not be entitled to. 
Wow. Hey, Louise Mack. Thank you. Wow, 10 members. Craziness, hey, Louise Mack. Louise, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And congrats to all the people who got gifted. Wow, Jan Spruill, look at that. Karma coming right back to you. A. Uh, Louise Mack gifted to Gina Gruber, Francis Reyes, Jan Spruill, Neha Matthew, Amy Alberts, Lee Tries, Senior Marketing Dick. So true, Panda. Lisa Sherwood, Shanice Bryan, KG, T. Uh, Lee, and that was it. Thank you. Um... Yeah, but you get my point. There's no way any person, any sane person, normal person, could wrap their head around the complexity of a multi-level marketing plan, uh, compensation plan, to the point where they actually went, you know what, this does seem like a good idea. There is no feasible way. There just isn't. There's just no way. There's just simply no way. Um, thank you again, A. Louise Mack. You are a G. Gina says, I didn't even realize it expired and then gifted back yet again. Hey man, if you don't want your memberships to expire, you can you can subscribe to uh, you know have them automatically renew, you know if you want to support the boy. All right, let's continue on. Here we go. After 21 years, Terry said, we have helped thousands of people: taxi drivers, truck drivers, and about 50% of women in our community work part time. Okay. They'd be happy if they could make $50,000 a year part-time with kids at home. For example, we have a gentleman who bought an office for his wife 12 years ago upon her starting with the company. She had not even completed her training yet. She became so successful, she's now earning $100,000 per year. It is part of how we serve our community. Our team mission statement is to help 1 million families <laughs> to help 1 million families to become millionaires. This is by helping them to learn how to build and preserve wealth throughout their lifetimes. Let me just see, let me just see something. What is a million times a million? One million times one million. I have to flip the phone. I don't even know, look at that. Look at the number I got. Three, six, nine, 12 zeros. Thank you, TK Subi or Subi, appreciate you. I think that, what is that, a trillion dollars? What is that number that I'm looking at? A trillion? Helping one mil, 12 zeros. You're gonna help one million, am I reading this right? Let me go back to this. Help one million families become millionaires. Is that a quadrillion? Like what? Thumbs up the stream, by the way, y'all. Come on now, we gotta thumbs it up. Thumbs up the king. How would you have a? How would a million different? And I know he's saying a million families, so maybe he means like, in his mind, a family is five people. Let's just say, and all of them are in WFG, and total, you know, so one million families is actually divided by five. So really, it's only two hundred thousand different people. But even two hundred thousand people. Contributing to this all becoming 200,000 times a million, you know, again, 11, what is that? 200,000 billion? I don't even, it doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make, the, the, that's like all the money in the world. Pocket change to a fellow like me. Well, Trevor Warren, hit that donation link in the chat. If you had, if you actually had, if you were a fan of mine and you actually had, 12 quadrillion dollars or whatever that figure was and you didn't donate me at least 10 bands I would be I would be actually be offended real shit. I might ban you fuck. That's crazy All right So of course, this is nonsense. These are also income claims WFG is one of those elusive companies that doesn't have an income disclosure available online But despite that I've been able to make four videos about how they're a pyramid scheme those videos have cumulatively over 1 million views um so there's him and his wife. Again, does that look like the same guy? Take that picture in your mind. How is this the same guy? He looks... I'm not going to say nothing bad. All right. 
Terry explains, when you put money in the bank, they give you simple interest. When the bank lends you money, when the bank lends you money, they collect compound interest. When they give you a mortgage, it will compound twice yearly. Of course, many consumers do not understand what compound means, and most can't even calculate the mortgage payment. Hence, we will educate you so that when you borrow money from the bank, you can pay them simple interest and learn how to get compound interest when you save money. Now, there are over 5,500 agents in my team within North America with WFG. I only have 24 hours in a day, Terry said. To make $4.5 million at age 69 would be unheard of. Today, we have over 100 offices in North America. In my opinion, this is a guy who got so fed up, and I don't blame him, got so fed up with life. If what he's saying is, if this article is even half true, where he was fired from IBM and at 50 years old went bankrupt, at 50 years old, if I was bankrupt, I might also go, you know what? Fuck this. I'll just do whatever. I'll just say whatever I got to say, even if it means lying. That's what I, that's what I think. All right. Terry mentioned that people have all kinds of dreams, but cannot achieve them with just their own two hands to earn an income with eight hours to work. They only create a per hour value, whereas in WFG, they create more than eight hours a day to help their associates build an agency. To start with a small agency with 15 to 20 people without any overhead cost, they've taken the best out of the following marketing, out of the following business structures, conventional corporations, franchising, and multi-level marketing. Don't be fooled by this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the exact same pitch that was shown to me in 2019 and again in 2021 when I made WFG Part 1 and WFG Part 3, respectively. They claim that their WFG business model is a hybrid model that takes the best of all those worlds, uh, conventional corporations, franchising, and multi-level marketing. Make no mistake, it is only multi-level marketing. And what is multi-level marketing? It is a made-up term that sounds better than what it actually is, a pyramid scheme. Multi-level marketing even on its face, is not true. The, the phrase is not an accurate title because it's not multi-level. If you were to actually draw the business model on a piece of paper, it would be infinite level marketing. But if you call it infinite level marketing, well, that's just nonsense. It's just a pyramid scheme. So make no mistake, multi-level marketing is a made-up term. It doesn't mean anything except it, it sounds better than saying what it actually is. It is a pyramid scheme. In franchising... <laughs> Here we fucking go. In franchising, the system works, but we don't put a $2 million investment in it, Terry says. We have an effective way, word of mouth advertising, which we call relationship marketing. Every person who joins our company becomes on how many people become, okay, M made it up. Each person who joins our company becomes on how many people become licensed by their organization, okay. Okay. 21 years ago, Terry lived in a basement suite behind London Drugs in Delta. Today, he lives in a penthouse overlooking that drugstore. So motivation, so inspiration. He has a house in Panorama, White Rock, Palm Springs, California. Oh, in Panorama, White Rock, Palm Springs, California, and another in Mississauga, Ontario. Each one of those properties is worth more than a milski. In the last several months, he has traveled to Mexico, California, Thailand, and Hawaii. All right. So how does it work, Terry? Maybe he'll tell us. Wow, that's actually a crispy pick. <laughs> pick. The Apple Watch and the ring? Go crazy on them, Terry. This shit is lit. Terry's eating, bro. Quote, I am living a dream. I am living a dream life that for most people would only happen in their dreams. It is possible to do this in our organization. Now I make $4 million a year. If I retire, if I re, if I retire today, my $4 million won't quit on me. It's equity that will go to my children. Literally not true. They could use it to build it to $10 million a year or more. Now my agency's worth is approximately $20 million. It will go up because in our system, there is built-in predictability of growth. Also not true. The financial industry is $109 trillion. Anyone can tap into it with our system. Not true. But no matter how busy you are, always a lot time for your family at least once a week. And once your dream has been fulfilled, it's time to pay back your community. Two years ago, I returned to my village in Punjab and we changed the sewer system. We also cleaned the water and put lights in the whole village. 
In the school there, we helped 500 women, and our target is to give them a new pair of shoes every year. We also donated thousands of dollars in Surrey and other parts of Canada. For dreamers who want to fulfill their dream, Terry said, I used to be bankrupt 21 years ago. If I manage to make it, why can't you? Zig Ziglar once said, you will get all you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And that's exactly what we're doing in WFG. Are you inspired? Are you inspired? I know I am. I know I am. Terry has has my soul absolutely bricked for the for the potential of what I could do in WFG. Um, Botox, you know. Sam Bankman Fried in the chat. What up? Um, <laughs> G squared says I was in WFG for two years. Terry Joe Hall lives in the U.S. and owns a Porsche Panamera now, but he used to have a car that had over 500,000 kilometers on it. Last I heard is that he's an alcoholic. <laughs> Just so crazy, the stories from Drishti Magazine versus the stories from people who are actually in WFG. I love it. Tariq says, I met Terry Joe Hall once. Well, how was that? Um... Makes me want to take massive action. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. There's some stuff that was left out by the uh, digital article that is not that is in the magazine. So let me see. Ooh, way more. Okay. Let me let me read from from the magazine. Okay. So this is from. Let me keep this picture of our boy Terry up on the screen so you can understand the context. All right. So in the in the book it says. Um, about the simple interest, compound interest. Here we go. Where is it? Okay, franchise, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Every person who joins our company becomes an entrepreneur. Not true. We teach you how to create volume and offer coaching at every step of the process. Associates will have access to coaching and mentorship in the USA. New York, New Jersey, Boston, Texas, Philadelphia, LA, Chicago, Florida, and more. In Canada, from coast to coast. Business development is done in an unknown market, tapped by the system, the system, that we teach to our people. The important, the important word in our system is learn. And within that word is earn. Our hardworking people want more out of life. In our book, Execute 90, Execute Order 90, in, the, in our book, Execute 90, I show the old equation of A plus B equals C. A is the occupation, B is the education needed, and C is the income. Mine is a new equation. <laughs> C equals A plus B. Wait a minute. If A plus B equals C, then isn't saying C equals A plus B the exact same thing just backwards? He hit us with the Pitbull line, naming all those cities, literally. He brags about how he bought his custom car and how it's about w worth about two mil. I mean, all right, let's hear him out. Mine is C. Mine is a new equation. C equals A plus B. Is the lifestyle you want, like what kind of house you want to live in, the kind of car to drive, vacation trips, etc. A is the money you want to make. And B is the career you need to make money. Working for a superstore or Tim Hortons won't make you a millionaire. Don't ask your child what they want to be. Instead, ask them what kind of life they want to live. Terry has over 23,000 people getting licenses. 5,500 are already licensed. Starting this year, his goal is to create a million families to become millionaires forecasted in the next five years. <laughs> On how many people become licensed by their organization, they will serve two to, two to four clients per license a year. Um, let's see. Tap anyone can tap in. We change the sewers. Wow. 
All right, that's the end of the article. So basically that article was all flexing. Now we have, starting with this next page after the Terry Joe Hall article, we have Harinder and Jack Jot. I believe this guy actually, if I'm not mistaken, he was, I, I've seen him before. I think he was at, he's from Edmonton and was in the Edmonton uh, WFG, whatever. So these each have a little blurb on each of these people. This one says, Harinder and Jack Jot immigrated to Canada in 2002. They always had a very comfortable and luxurious lifestyle in India and felt royalty there. They had household helpers to prepare meals, do laundry, clean the house, and help the family daily. They had a successful business manufacturing power cables all over India. One day, Pavni, their son, announced he wanted to pursue a career opportunity in North America. The husband and wife were utterly stunned by this made-up mind decision. Their close-knit family became all involved with their son's aspirations, so they moved with him to Vancouver, Canada, thinking they made a successful life in India, they could do it again in any part of the world. Like the other new immigrants who moved to this country, they were full of hope, dream, and excitement. Okay, you can tell that each of these people just wrote their own thing because the grammar is so bad. Like the other immigrants who moved to this country, they were full of hope, dream, and excitement. But they re realized they also had their fair share of early struggles and uncertainties. Or as Raja Daliwal says, uncertainties. Their children adapted quickly and easily, but Jack Jot and Harinder didn't. They had to start from scratch with basic jobs and no relatives here to lean on. It was a rough and tough beginning in Canada. In 2003, their lives changed. They were approached and presented with the opportunity of WFG, a platform where dreams could come true. Harinder was totally sold... Harinder was totally sold on this dream and started working relentlessly towards building a profitable business. In the meantime, Jack Jha worked with one of Canada's top five big banks and immediately made it to making multiple six-figure incomes, the first woman to achieve this milestone in that bank. In Jack Jha's initial years in the World Financial Group, he worked tenaciously and steadily to establish himself because he was hungry to win big. Jack Jha, after attending WFG's convention in Las Vegas, quit her job and joined Harinder full-time as his business partner. As a power couple, Harinder and Jack Jot, bro, fuck Jay-Z and Beyonce. I'm talking about Harinder and Jack Jot. What are y'all saying? As a power couple, Harinder and Jack Jot achieved an executive vice chairman, EVC, rank with this company in five years. Soon their children and spouses joined them, and they ran a successful and flourishing business with them. Harinder is so proud that his entire family has helped Hundreds of families. That's one way of looking at it. Harinder and Jack Jaw work as a team and are equal partners. They have expanded across North America. Today, they have over 100 offices with over 3,700 licensed business partners. Their hunger to win big made an impact on so many lives. Recently, they earned the position of FC, field chairman, one of the highest positions in the company and the financial industry. They are thankful that this great business opportunity helped change not only their families' lives, but many others. Somebody thought of their family when they were looking for something bigger. May their story inspire everyone to not give up with their dream. You have whatever it takes to win for yourself and for your family. But what, what is the business though? But what is the business though? I mean, this goes, dude, these pages now with these success stories just go on and on. There's like a few. Look, no, those are not the same guy. Look. Keep flipping through. This guy's young. I think, or this guy. I think I actually recognize this guy. Nima Atar. Growing up, does it say what city they're from? It doesn't say. Growing up, Nima's dream was to become a professional soccer player. He practiced and played for countless hours until he reached the highest level of youth soccer in Canada. He learned the meaning of discipline and hard work during that process. But in 2014, he also started to grow a lot of interest in entrepreneurship and decided to drop out of university. Around this time, Nima came across an audiobook in which he heard that one of the best ways to learn a skill in which you want to succeed is by learning directly from someone who is success successful in it. With this lesson in mind, soon after he was introduced to WFG in 2014, Nima grew a belief that he could become one of the top players in this industry. However, after two years of copious amounts of recruiting, he still did not have anything to show for it and chose to pursue other avenues of entrepreneurship. You don't say. In the end, he realized that the grass is not always greener on the other side, and realize that WFG is truly the best opportunity out there. What? I thought he said... I, 
thought you said he had nothing to show for it after two years. Oh, okay. He quit and he hired and fired himself. I see. It says, since returning to the business in 2018 at the age of 23, so 2014, four years earlier. So he started when he was 19 and then rejoined at 23. Since returning to the business in 2018 at the age of 23 and starting from zero again, with the right mentorship, hard work, and determination, he is proud to have grown his business to reach great heights on the leaderboards and is excited to continue growing while helping others do the same. Nima, I, I pray you did not pay for your inclusion in this segment. We got some amazing names. Ram Sandal, Devinder Singh Dule, Kanwar Pavni Sukija. Vishavdeep Singh Gill. I wonder if we're going to see Hartage in here. A lot of, dude, just like a lot of. I, I imagine that if we were to go through every single one of these people's bios, we would find that. Um, hold on, this woman's like an old lady. I imagine we would find all of the boxes checked, you know. Harpreet, here's a girl, Harpreet Bular. Born in Punjab, Harpreet completed her IT and moved to Canada in 04. She worked with central banks like JP Morgan Chase and Shaw Communication for many years, then joined WFG in 2016. An excellent decision to build her financial future and help many families and businesses improve their future. A mother to two champions who are ready to be influential leaders. She's ever so thankful to her partner who always believed in her from the day they met up to this day and always wants her to do what feels suitable to her. Okay. I mean, it just keeps going. Just keeps going. More, there's more of them. And yes, they are. There's not one white person that I've seen so far. It's all been Indian people. But of course, this is Drishti Magazine. You know, I'm like six, six, seven pages into this. Lakwinder Singh Sandhu, Rupinder Singh Bajwa, Jagjit Singh Dhaliwal. I mean, are they related? Suck chain brar. Dude, suck chain. There's two suck chains on the same page. So, oh, it's alphabetical. Suck chain brar and suck chain sing dollywall. Forgive me if I ever got those two mixed up. Suck chain brar and suck chain sing dollywall. With a name like suck chain, I got. She like my jewelry. She want us. Like a rap lyric, shawty like my jewelry, she want to suck chain. <laughs> Stupid. All right, suck chain brar. Born in India, suck chain completed his bachelor's in agriculture. He immigrated to Canada in 01 with his wife and young daughter. He worked many jobs before settling on a career in the transport industry, transportation industry. Years later, his neighbor introduced him to WFG, the platform for anyone still dreaming. Through hard work, dedication, and an incredible team, he achieved his 250K ring and title as executive marketing director. He is working alongside his wife, Jasveer, and daughter, Pamil Preet, to build a massive brokerage that will provide financial security for them and future generations. And Sukchain Singh Dhaliwal, the other Sukchain, has a very similar story as well. The first day, Suk, they abbreviated his name here just to Suk, S U K H, the or Suk. The first day, Suk checked out the setup, it appealed to him. He always wanted to be an entrepreneur, so he joined WFG in 2013 and is still serving the community via the organization. Fuck, I wish it said which city they were in. I mean, I could look them up. I could just look up these names, followed by WFG, and find out, but, you know. Suck Chain is just an average Saturday night. You're, you're forgetting about Ramit in me? Yep. Suck Chain, that's his poor name. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in this magazine has probably befriended, has friended Scott Johnson on Facebook. So true. Scott Johnson's Facebook friends are all like Indian names. Uh, need that creatine update? Almost a month on creatine. So we're going. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Yep. And the word learn is the word earn. Wisdom. Yep. Harinder is recruited under Terry, and he has three offices in Surrey. I was his fifth downline. Katrina says, I, it's 10 p.m. here. It's almost 10 here, and I feel like Marco's reading me a bedtime story. This is better than any bedtime story, uh, Katrina. You know this. 
Where else are you going to suck chain? All right. Yeah. Hope you guys are doing okay over there on the East Coast. I heard the smoke from the forest fires that we had over here has got over there. But also quit bitching about it. We, I had, we had the smoke here right next to the fires. Like the fires were burning just outside of Edmonton. And we had the smoke directly like next to us. Y'all are getting the leftover smoke that has already been dissipated from traveling all across the country and broken up by the different winds. And now you guys have some smoke for a little bit. Like, bro, come on. We had the worst air quality on the planet two weeks ago from the smoke that was here. As a matter of fact, if you, any of you know the legend Chris the Hobby Guy out in New York, he actually called me on the phone today and was like, are you okay? The smoke here is so bad. I was like, yeah, Chris, it's already passed. All right. G squared says, Jack Ja was about to divorce Harinder specifically for joining a pyramid scheme. Terry had to convince her to stay. Insane. Set up a boxing match with these guys. If they win, I'll join the scam. So funny. Everyone in this mag. Yeah, okay. Suck chain. I wonder who's Lick Chain, y'all stupid, aka John Smith, yeah. My coworker told me today his brother's in WFG. Oh, man. Even Stevens, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Marco is the smoke. Complain, Devin. AQI here is over 400. Pretty sure it was 1,000 where I was, but I don't know how high it actually goes. Um, no worries, Harpreet. Imagine moving to NY from California to escape the wildfires. LOL. Um, your air conditioner doesn't even pull the air from outside. Duh. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, there's fires in Quebec. Oh, I stand corrected then. Hopi Nay says, as a math teacher, my dude has all kinds of different units. And the part about C equals to A plus B is wrong. <laughs> Thumbs up the ting, y'all. Come on. We're almost at 200. Thumbs up the ting. Let's get it. All right, so we have more. I mean, it, it keeps going. We got Suck Chain. We got Arpreet, or Arpit, 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 Harwinder, Matu, Sunny Chada, Rahal Dutt. I mean, made it up. Oh, here's the last page. Mandeep Singh, Vikram Jeet Rai, and Mohinder Sodhi. These are the last three. What else is going on in this magazine? Drishti. The whole, the whole magazine is just ads, bro. Looking for a realtor? Call Preet Singh. Call Abhishek Grover, mortgage advisor. Okay. I actually haven't even looked through this fucking magazine yet. Drishti Awards. Who knows? Who even knows? Who even knows what this means? Vesaki. What is Vesaki? Is that like Eid, but for Indian people? Just ads. Celebrating Vesaki, celebrating Vesaki. Uh, ads for, I mean, some trucking company. There's a building supplies company. Uh, some frozen Indian food on this page. This is an interesting magazine, bro. A pizza, Indo-Chinese restaurant that also, oh, Delta Pizza, okay. Favorite veggie pizza in Surrey. Ads, ads, ads. Dude, does anyone, does anyone even read magazines, bro? Oh, that actually looks good. There's a recipe here for golden coconut orange rice. Ooh, that actually looked good. Oh, you it, it looks ugly because of the green screen is warping it, but trust me, it looks good. Can can you even see this page? Oh, that page is see-through too, because it's green. The green screen. I mean it's not a green screen. This is my house. I mean car ads. What kind of whoever who, hey listen man, whoever Runs this magazine is getting a bag to just run these ads. Uh, 
then the back cover, Harp Kila, realtor, or yeah, he's a realtor in Vancouver. So wow. So that was, um, that was Drishti Magazine featuring Terry Joe Hall and literally every, uh, let me call Terry Joe Hall real quick. Let me call him. I'm going to call Terry Joe Hall. How do I have his number? It's on the, uh, if you just Google Terry Joe Hall WFG, there's a full uh, page here on WFG Canada site with his, his info. So I'm going to just call Terry Joe Hall real quick. See what we get. This page isn't loading. Yay, it's not loading. Yay. Harp Kila, I barely know her. So stupid. I'm sorry. Nice. It's a lifestyle magazine. It means nothing. Is there a WFG crossword puzzle? There should be. Just tip the chain. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let me call them. 604 635 3150. All right, calling Terry Joe Hall. You have reached World Financial Group at Unit 101. Let me call the cell number instead. 604-488. Thank you very much for calling. Your call has been forwarded to a voicemail service that has not been initialized by the Damn it. Huh. Yeah, maybe I'll call Peter Mingles. See where see see where he's at. Let me call Peter. Need to check to see if my boy's okay. What's the, what's the app that I can change my number every time without it costing me so that I can call Peter from different numbers? Because he knows this number. Hello? Hello? Oh, he hung up. <sighs> call two MLM reps and have them try to recruit each other? No kidding. Let me call somebody from WFG. See if, see if at 8 p.m. on a random Wednesday night, they are willing to recruit me. Let me call Raja Dhaliwal, actually. He was the main villain in my WFG Part 3 video, which if you haven't seen that, you can use a VPN to watch it or message me and I'll send you the... Uh, I'll send you the link that you can watch the unlisted version because that video was unfortunately reported for defamation, not even like legally, just using YouTube's own defamation reporting tools. And the video was, has been hidden from people in certain jurisdictions. And I've even reached out to YouTube support. And on Twitter, you, Team YouTube told me there doesn't seem to be any restrictions on the video. But I told them, no, there is. Like it doesn't even show up on my channel when I look for it. So... Then when I messaged them in YouTube Creator Studio, they told me, no, we just can't assist you. I said, well, can you tell me what is wrong with it? Can you tell me like what, what it says? And they won't tell me anything, so. Yay, that's good. Here, Raja, where's Raja? Uh-oh, bag? Can't wait for the Primerica video. Dude, Primerica video is so fucking good. I wish you guys would just 
Let's just drop them bags. Get it out of the way so we can get that Primerica video out. Mayra said at the beginning of the stream, can only donate a dollar at this time. Sorry, it can't be more. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you. Thank you, Mayra. I really appreciate that. And it's no worry. Honestly, it's the thought. Well, the thought counts and the bag also counts. But, you know, what's the thing in the Bible where the rich... The, the rich person only gave whatever, but the poor person gave everything they could. You get me. I'm so wise. Raja Dhaliwal WFG. Let's see if he has a number. WFG. Let me see if I can find him. What? Wrong button. Let me see if I can find him. He, he doesn't have like a thing that pops up the same as the other people. Hmm. Interesting. Oop. Oop. Whoa. This is from May of last year. Canadian insurance agent slapped with penalties? Could this be my boy Raja? Ooh. Sandeep Dhaliwal, not Raja. Okay, my mistake. The FSRA has issued an order which imposed two administrative penalties worth $5,000 on former life insurance agent Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and they were with WFG. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, why? Why? For making false and misleading statements and representations in the social solicitation of registration of five-life insurance. <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm going to do the same thing with Raja Dhaliwal and Greg Stranadka and Jarek Chin and Ben Hilborn and Cameron Agnew and Real Michaud and uh, whatever the fuck those other guys' names are. Um, I actually, you know, in my WFG Part 4 video, I showed how the how WFG is in trouble with the financial regulator in Ontario. Um, well, not to say too much, but the FSRA reached out to me directly and I hadn't even made a report yet. Um, but they reached out to me to uh, ask me for some information, which I am happily going to give them. So... Watch out for that, WFG. Jarek, wherever you are. All right. Let me see something. Okay. MLM agent slapped with ding-dongs. Wrong. Why are you calling Ming? Just because I'm <laughs> bored. I miss him. Um, we love the theme music from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Signal. Can Signal do that? In the Primerica video, Marco kills a guy. Cannot confirm or deny. What about Hartage? Ooh, that's a good idea. I'll call Hartage. You know who I really want to call is Nathan Goldberg. I, I miss miss calling. I miss talking to that guy, man. Let me see. Hartage Singh, insurance agent, WFG. I hope there's a picture of him. Oh. Oh. Is this him? Let me call him. Let me call this number and see if this is the Hartage. What do I even say to Hartage? Seven, eight, no, what is it? Seven, eight, zero, uh, six, one, sixteen. Let me call him. It's already 10 p.m. where Nathan is, though. Interesting. Here, this is a WFG agent, Hartage Singh. Is that the same number I just called? 757-6162. Yep. Dang, spookiness. He has an email here. Alberta. Ooh, we can sort by city. Edmonton, all agents in Edmonton. I bet you Greg's the first one that comes up. Oh, yeah, he's the third one. Cameron Agnew Real me showed Greg Stranadka. Should I call Greg Stranadka? Let me call him. <laughs> what do I even say to Greg? No, because then he's going to then he's gonna be like, Marco called me on his live stream, and he's harassing me. All right, buddy. Let's see. Adam Daw, that's the other guy's name I was thinking of. There's also a guy, John something, who was the guy 
Yeah, this is him, John Harrison. Oh, there's Jarek. John Harrison. This is the guy who, in my WFG Part 3 video, this was the guy who I was on the phone with, and he was like, this is also actually, I think, the guy who kicked me out of their office back in WFG Part 2, uh, in the one office where I said you guys didn't lock it. That's this guy. He is also the guy who, in my WFG Part 3 video, I said that um, there's a part where I like made contact with this guy to see if he would pitch me WFG and like send me an invite to a Zoom meeting, and he did, and I told him my name was Mike. He did not leave me alone. He kept pestering me for weeks and weeks and weeks after our initial conversation with no reply, mind you, just straight up ghosting, keeps hitting me up. And I feel like that in itself is telling because what legitimate job will harass and hound you to work for them? Any job I have ever had, I had to be the one that was like following up and showing the initiative and like trying to get my foot in the door and prove why I was the best person to get hired. The fact that the supposed successful businessman that's hiring um, was, you know, pestering me is insane. I mean, look how easy it would be for any uh, regulatory agency, FSRA, Competition Bureau, FTC, to get access to what they're doing on their Zooms. Look, weekly Zoom information sessions, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and Thursdays at 5 p.m., contact for more details. You could literally just call or text this guy or email him from any burner account and say, hey, I'm Bob, I'm Sarah, I'm whatever, and get access to the Zoom meeting, record the Zoom meeting, and use it to report. And it's like the fact that these you know organizations, FSRA, Competition Bureau, whatever, aren't like don't seem to be doing that is perplexing to me. I mean, how, how much research would they actually have to do? Repeat that same process on three different, five different, 10 different agents uh, Zoom meetings from four different provinces to get like a large sample, uh, you know, example of what people in WFG are doing generally. And you would see right there what's going on. The fact that that isn't happening and that it requires like civilians like me to go out of their way and like dedicate their lives to doing this shit is really uh, shameful and I don't even know the words to describe it. It's just ridiculous because I was in the Zoom meeting. Yeah. Call Robert Hollis. Marco is the toxic ex that calls when he's drunk. So true. So true. Um. All right. Okay. Mm MLM agent slapped. Okay, we saw that. When are you going to do a round two with the PHP dude? You know what? Alejandro actually hit me up recently, but uh, we didn't get time to hop on the phone. But I wonder if he's starting to realize. Panda Pandalov, CCO. Yeah, Panda remembers that. There was a guy named like uh, Robert, Robert, oh no, what was it? I forget. Something, yeah, Robert Rob, Robinov or something like that. John J Jaganov, Jaganov, something like that. And it was like, a, it was like one of the, these WFG guys who I was supposed to debate sent me this supposed email from supposedly WFG's legal department saying that he couldn't debate me. Oh, it was like Ivan Ivanov or some shit. Ivan Ooze. So stupid. Silicon Valley, what up? Wobbly, flobbly, gaga poop is WFG. So true. Why did you lie to me about the meeting? Oh, yeah, that's what I would ask Cartage. It's a phone sex line now. Legend Gaming, what up? Ah, uh ah, -uh, fam. It's a one, two, I pre. I'm glad you girks that fool. <laughs> Call Destiny, the person I posted in multi-level misery. She is the top recruit in Texas. Hold on, let me see what's, what, what this is about. Do you think it would be fun to do a stream where I let people call into the stream? That was actually how Gary, how I got the Gary Cornegate debate, uh, Primerica Gary Cornegate debate um, back in 2021. He was just randomly called into a stream I did. Welcome to the Discord, Ready Skeddy. Great username. Um, let me see. I 
I, I can't. Call Gary V. Yep. You want me to read the, if you're ever running out of content, the fanfic is there and now safe for work. Okay. Marco, have you ever noticed how WFG and all MLMs always encourage spouses to join? I have. The Lula Rich documentary hit it on this post. Remember a stream you and Phil did a Saturday long ago and you talking about starting your YouTube and just look at you now. I love you, man. Keep it up. Oh, wow. Thank you, Fiend Skull. That's amazing. Yeah, that was a while ago, huh? Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. Ask him what he's wearing. Wow. What up, Mike Unt? Marco's MLM party line be dry AF right now. No one wants to defend their business. Ivan Ivanov. Thank you, Panda. Where do these names come from? I really want to see Envision You get put in the spotlight. I did a stream about uh, David Imonitier and then Envision You. Um, what up, Tretino? Allow callers. Okay. Okay, I could do that. Maybe on Friday's stream. Let me see. Enpaz posted something here in the Discord. I want to see what this is. Let me turn on the Discord sound effects or sounds, I guess, and see if I can share this with you guys. All right. Yeah, they're very sensitive. To this is Peter, me when I prank called Peter. That. And, you know, deservedly so. But I think sometimes people have to give a guy a little bit of slack relative to what he said, what he meant, and the concept of that's what it felt like. He felt like he was violated. And maybe not the same way. This is when... Peter is defending Scott Johnson, saying that he felt that he was R-worded financially and compares it to women who have had that actually happen to them uh, by saying that what he went through is more or less the same thing. Wow, what, what else is Peter saying? Or Scott. Are you one of Narcos drug addicts, mentally ill, or both? <laughs> At least I didn't lose 250k on an obvious scam because of narcissism. <laughs> So funny. Oh my God. And Paz going back and forth with him. Oh my God. Love that y'all are putting the LOL comments as well. Do you think there is a right way to okay. do an MLM company? I believe there's a right way, but I believe that if MLM companies actually did that, most of them would just go out of business because they would have to lower their prices dramatically, which mm -hmm. would be one of two impacts. One would be there's going to be less profit for the company, and then there's also going to be less money left over for the bonus payments, and people are just going to walk away, and the whole thing's going to collapse. So I, I think... And yeah, he defends it still. What did they do that you think justified using that language? Uh, well... Savvy's pressing him about calling women cunts and bitches. I've never, I've never treated anybody, man or woman, unless they first treat me in that, in that type of a manner. Sure. Uh, what did they do? I'm asking, how did they treat you badly? I couldn't tell you specifically what they did. <laughs> um, but oh, okay. I, I've, also, I've also developed the, uh, just the, the technique of, you know, if, if they insult me, then I insult them 10 times worse just to get rid of them because I don't want to waste any more time with somebody who doesn't want to have a communication. Okay, I guess, I mean, I don't. How, you would be wasting more time. Move on to a different person. Why, why insult them back? What, what, why is, how is that productive? Well, it kind of brings a closure to it. They, they go away. <laughs> it, okay, but they would go away if you just stopped talking to them too. So by insulting it and escalating the situation, that doesn't bring a factual closure, that brings a closure that's emotional to you. So you've proven that things were not, that this is not all just factual. There is an emotional component that's also important. Well, as, as when I was giving my deposition after Amway sued me, um, the, the Amway lawyer asked me several questions and then he was obviously getting exasperated. And he, he asked me, do you always have to get in the last word? And I said, yes. And they turned the camera off. That's just the way I'm wired. 
Okay, I, I'm wired. <laughs> That's just the way I'm wired. I'm just a douchebag. I'm just a cock. Insane. And so welcome to the Discord as well, Random Salmon. Let me see what y'all are saying here in my Discord. Oh, I got to read the the Beyond Building Fortunes Radio fan fiction as well. They died in a horrible tool scam accident, but they backed off Marco Hart after a goon managed to get so fun. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I really hope Building Fortunes Radio, I really hope the saga is not over. Seriously, I would be really sad if that happened. I genuinely, I'm not even just saying that. Like, I genuinely would be sad because that, it's a lot of fun. To me, anyways. It's a lot of fun when you thumbs up the stream, too. The stream is way funner when you do that. Thumbs up the king. But I'm actually really excited, man. Really excited about this Primerica video. Um, yeah, like, I'm at the point in the process where I'm just nervous and uh, cause I know it's coming out soon and I've been working on it so long and yeah, but anytime I've put in this type of work for a, for one of these infiltration videos, it has always, always paid off. And I, I hope to see that happen again and, um, really bring a new, like revitalize the channel and, and push me maybe up to that 70 K or above subscriber point. And, um, maybe open some doors for some new opportunities and, you know, um, I, I, I don't remember what y'all said earlier about me talking about my personal life, but this sort of addresses my personal life and also talks about, you know, this MLM stuff. So I'm, I'm going to say it. Recently, even Steven said that I looked so young in that clip. Damn. Um, Marco is a snitch. So true. I used to only care about things like, you know, making money and having clout and shit like that. And now I realize like as I'm getting older and I, I know I'm only 27 still, as I'm, I'm getting older, I, what I really care about is being the best version of myself, as cheesy as it sounds, improving every day, going to the gym, doing what I need to do and doing stuff with like doing work that helps other people. I really do believe that the money that you make, if you're making the money ethically and legally, uh, I don't want MLM folks to watch me say this and then misappropriate it and be like, well, I must be doing a lot of good for the world because I make a lot of money. It's not what I'm saying. But I do think that the amount of money you make does correlate at least in some degree to the amount of, uh, good you're doing or the amount of stress you're taking off someone else. Like going out to eat is more expensive than cooking at home. And that's because the people you are paying for people to take the burden off your shoulders of going grocery shopping, preparing the food, doing dishes, etc. You're paying for that. And I think it works the other way too. Whatever stress you are taking on from other people, uh, will probably correlate to the amount of money you're making. And that's been true in my experience. The videos that have done the best and when I'm making the most, like in 2021 when I was making the most money from YouTube that I ever had was also around the time that I got into a legal situation where I had to put up $10,000 for a lawyer. So it's like, you know, more money, more problems, but, you know, they're, they are related. They do correlate. But um, I really do want to... Uh, I do really want to just continue to improve, um, do work that is going to help people but because I believe that is uh, a sensible and viable way to uh, not only make money, but it's not just about money, like opportunities and really like build a, uh, a if I was to die, build up the, the story, if you will, or the legacy of like, People saying like, yeah, he was a good guy. He did this to help people. Here's how he made the world better in, in some small way or, or maybe some big way, depending on, you know, how long I am around. But uh, that and spending more time with my family, you know, Robert told me on that one phone call we had, just take care of yourself. I've seen this drive people crazy, what you're trying to do. And um, it can be dangerous, you know, these people, these, these brainwashed 
MLM zombies, they're everywhere. And they don't think rationally, they think emotionally. And it is, there is a possibility that maybe when I'm out and about at the mall one day or at the grocery store, somebody tries to step to me or like use violence against me because they're against what I do or because they're brainwashed. It's, you know, if, it, if this brainwashing was powerful enough to make my best friend in high, from high school when we were 19 years old say, you're just like everyone else, you don't believe in me, uh, they told me you would say that and cut me off because I didn't support his WFG dreams. If the brainwashing is powerful enough to do that to somebody, then for sure the, brain, the brainwashing is powerful enough to make someone who wasn't already my friend uh, try to you know, harm me in some way. So spending more time with my family, improving myself, and continuing to do stuff that's going to help people really brings a sense of fulfillment that just making money without actually like without actually there being some purpose behind it or without knowing that you're actually helping some people it, it's a lot different cuz i've had that before where i had jobs that i was not passionate about at all and i was making money but i wasn't actually like helping people like casino the casino i worked at is a great example like is the casino the entire ecosystem of the casino is it actually helping anyone like Maybe you could say that the entertainment it provides to people, you know, who just want to go and spend money and have fun, that it is helping people. But there's probably a case to be made, too, for all the uh, people that lost more than they were hoping to spend at a casino. So uh, what I'm doing now is like definitely the most proud thing I've ever been uh, involved with, the most proud thing um, I've ever been you know, that I've ever done, the most proud I am of something that I've done. So yeah, man, uh, really appreciate your guys' support on this journey because there's 168 people watching this stream now. I know the, the um, demand is still out there for what I do, and it probably will be for years. And so I, I feel like it's, I, I stepped away in 2022, and I know I probably killed my momentum, but all it takes is one video to bring it back. And I hope that this next Primerica video does that. And, uh, you know, takes it to the next level, so to speak. And I, I hope to just stay on it, stay on, you know, not, not let it slip going forward so that I can keep, keep growing it and keep capitalizing on it. And, um, yeah, this past Sunday, I went to my cousin's wedding. She, uh, my cousin was the bride in this wedding. So she got married and it was a beautiful, uh, Beautiful experience. I reconnected with some relatives I haven't seen in a long time. It was very nice to see my cousins. And like, as I get older, I just see myself more. I, I see different like signs, different cues of like my childhood being over. Like last year when my grandma passed away, I, that was sort of like my childhood is over type end credits moment because, you know, my nieces were there and I thought, yeah, you know, the time for me to be sad is sort of past. Like, it's my job to like be there for my younger relatives and whatever, like people who like, I'm that older cousin now. So, um, and since that time last year, I've been, I've reconnected with a lot of relatives. So, um, that's been nice. And, uh, yeah, that's more, more so what I'm, what I'm concerned about these days, but, um, it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to do work that, you know, is helping people, and to be able to make money off of it, wow, that's so blessed. I live in Canada. Man, so lucky. I didn't do anything to achieve living in Canada. I was born here. Uh, I didn't do anything to um, achieve a lot of things. I was just lucky. It was just pure privilege. So putting that, you know, doing, you know, willingly doing things that are uncomfortable, like, you know, putting myself in the crosshairs of some lawsuit uh, to help people when I don't have to, like I could just continue to live a privileged life and uh, not make it so hard on myself. But I think that is, uh, I saw a thing about Jordan Peterson talking about like suffering, willful suffering that you choose to put yourself through. It might not even have been Jordan Peterson. I don't remember, but like going to the gym and putting yourself through that discomfort and, uh, you know, doing something to help people out in the world and putting yourself through that discomfort uh, is really where a lot of um, fulfillment comes from. And I think it's so true, so true. So yeah, 
Okay, enough with that. Let me see what y'all are saying. I, oh, by the way, once this Primerica video drops, I am going to be doing so much fucking content about Primerica, I have to warn you. Once this Primerica video drops, you have to consider whatever you see in this Primerica video is only scratching the surface. Each of the people who I make, who I talk about in this Primerica video have so much content. My husband sat next to me and when he heard your voice, he said, lick the stream. I said, bro, that's DC. Marco says thumbs up the ting. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda and her husband. Yeah, lick the stream and thumbs up the ting too. Why not? Why not do both? Thank you, Miss Amanda. Um, but what I was saying was each of the people who you see me talk about in this video, they all have tons and tons of content out there on the internet that, I, that I'm going to react to, which I haven't reacted to yet because the video hasn't come out yet and I don't want to, you know, spoil shit too early. So just know that. And Instagram too, bro. If you're not following me on Instagram, always Marco. I'm almost at 10K followers again. The most I ever had was 17K. And then in 2022, I was like removing followers and getting people to unfollow me because I was done with the MLM stuff and whatever. But almost at 10K again. And it is going to be a bloodbath on Instagram once this video comes out, I promise you. Um, Panda says he's taking, or Enpaz says he's taking a full load for sure. So true. Is that when you were running your global cartel? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, money also does relieve, help relieve the mental load. So if y'all want to donate $2,500, put it in the ting. And amazing says you're a genuine guy, Marco. Thank you, amazing, appreciate that. Let's see, 170 people times $5. Pfft, that's 850 bucks. Think about that. That's actually crazy. Almost, that'd be almost half of the total dono goal. A third, it would be a third of the dono goal if everyone dropped five, a five sheet. That's crazy. For less than a Starbucks, that's crazy. Infiltrate Scientology next. We do have a Scientology uh, office or whatever here in Edmonton. Uh, Enpaz says, I'm convinced Peter is behind the change in direction on Building Fortunes Radio. Scott is freaking out wherever he can. They'll be back. They will be back. Hopefully Scott can get a discount from Peter since he can't talk about you anymore. Yeah. Your therapist is in Monet. Oh, man. You got to drop her. That's insane. Did she talk about mindset the whole time? So this is your why. Yeah, this is my why. So funny. Find out Marco's why here. Thanks, Jared. Um, Thomas says, it gets easier, Marco. When I started my business, it was tough. And even when I made my first decent money, it was still tough. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Sounds like you got a lot of money. I'm just playing. Casinos are horrible. The house always wins. Yep. Um... And Paz says, that's the pressure that you get as being a man. You got to be the rock. I am Dwayne Johnson, bro. I am the rock. Thank you. Amazing for the compliment and the nice words. And those are the same thing. But thank you. When am I getting a wifey and kiddos? Honestly, I'm not. I mean, we'll see, man. Who knows? Who knows? If it didn't happen for another 10 years, I wouldn't be upset. You know, I think, look, bro, Al Pacino is 83 years old and expecting a baby with his 29-year-old girlfriend. So, you know, my, I'm pretty sure my sperms are going to be swimming for a while. And if I had the choice right now of having a kid in two years or, and like having, okay, let, or let's say even having a kid right now with the amount of money I have and the amount of money I'm making or having a kid when I'm 35 or even 40, but I have from now until then to just work and make money and try to improve the world uh, without anyone else depending on me. I'm choosing the other one. I'm choosing 40. No problem. So, but of course, if I fall in love, I fall in love. You know, that, that uh, you never know how life can play out. Maybe, maybe 10 years from now, I'm single and I'm 37 and I fall in love and it happens then. You, ne you never know. So... Marco, he thinks he's famous now. Who, Scott or me? Both of us, actually. 
pin the Streamlabs pussy. Oh, I did. Get your knock in. Philip is sleeping. Yes, exactly, Johnny Azul. Thank you, Johnny Azul. Get your Narcan ready. You're about to OD on that Primerica content. So true. So true. Did I draw a name for the giveaway? I got to go back and watch that stream. That's a great... Thank you for reminding me of that, Johnny. I completely forgot that I fucking did that. I did a, I did a dono goal on the last stream, I think, for a giveaway at $500 where I was going to include like merch and... Um, Books and shit. And that dono goal actually did get filled, didn't it? I think it did. Oh, it got filled, buddy. Oh, it got... Oh, shit. Oh, it got filled, all right. Right to the brim. Somebody dropped two bills. Was that Legend Gaming or who? Sugar Mama. Okay, yes, I remember. Yes, yes. Okay, I got to draw a name for that. I'm going to draw a name for that. Let me write that. Write it down. Ooh, uh. um, even Steven says, kids will cramp your style. They are gross. Make the bag, then kiddos can come later. Y'all want me to have a baby? I'll put a donut goal in the chat for a baby, bro. 10K. 10K, I'll, sh I'll shoot up the club and have a baby. 10K. Ah, nah, nah. Let's say, let's say, I might, you know what? Let's just see if it happens. Streamlabs link in the chat. I'll have a baby. New fanfic idea just landed. Nice. Kids will literally nuke the channel. Imagine me trying to stream and you just hear a baby. Or a toddler. Dad, I'm hungry. And I'm over here being like, these rat fucks. World Financial Group. My baby is like playing with magnets on the fridge, drawing a pyramid formation. And I'm like, what did you learn today? The baby's like, five by five. I'm like, nice, nice. a nice pick should have changed it sooner hey man you don't need kids or a wife just mighty beans so true so true thank you and paz dropping the dono link plot twist marco is married with three kids already I, I i honestly couldn't do it um got games on your phone dad I'd be, my son imagine my son it would be the same thing as what Scott and Peter's family probably do with them. My son would be like, are you beefing those two old men on the internet again, dad? I'd be like, yes. <laughs> my son's in the other room, like on Roblox, talking to his friends. Like, my dad's a fucking loser. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Kid, hey, yo, grips me that breast milk, son. Straight up. Um, man, I'm so excited to show you what I got in this. Primerica video, but I got to do some major snip snipping of segments from it because it's just too darn freaking long right now. And I, I think I know what I'm going to cut from it, but uh, it's a matter of me doing it. And honestly, y'all are y'all keep asking me, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? I'm also upping the production quality of the video because I have some motion graphics that are going to uh, be included in the video to make it more visually appealing at certain moments where I talk about how the money flows in the system and how the recruiting structure is bonkers and da 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 da, da. It's going to be shown visually with diagrams on screen. So I'm trying to up the quality, up the branding, up the, you know, do almost like a James Janney type of uh, documentary style almost video. So uh, I'm sure you guys are going to love it. It's one of those videos that I'm sure you can watch multiple times. And... Uh, I'm very excited to, to combine everything that I've learned about YouTube and editing and multi-level marketing and just combine it all into one big flim. So, uh, you know, hopefully it doesn't go longer than 45 minutes. But yeah, you know. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, I mean, that's it. That's really all I got for today. I know we haven't even been streaming two hours yet, but, you know, sometimes less is more. Am I right? Imagine the adorable anti-MLM onesies. So true. And I love chilling with y'all. Are you using Comic Sans for the font for said graphics? Could be. Could be. Could be. Oh, and you know what? And the winner of the giveaway is going to um, have, have their picture included in some diagram of some sort in the... Uh, in the Primerica video, if they give me their permission. 
I'll use it as like a random headshot in one of the diagrams that shows like, um, you know, different people in the downline or whatever. Yeah, send the kids to Gooniversity. I will, um, I don't know. I, that Terry Joe Hall magazine was the only thing I planned to talk about today. And uh, <laughs> I didn't expect to get through it that quickly. But what I was going to say was, after I trimmed down the Primerica script a little bit and cut some of the segments, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to probably film me talking those bits this week. And then, that's you. Fuck. And then it's just a matter of me placing those bits where they go in the sequence of the overall video and then trimming that down, tightening it up, and I'll basically have uh, the first draft of the watchable video done. And then after that, it's just adding, you know, the zoom ins and the zoom outs and uh, things that pop up on the screen and the motion graphics and whatever. And then we'll be set. So I'm excited. Mars Kohler, oh, I didn't get an alert. You were live. Poo poo. Really? I don't have Discord alerts on? Even Discord? Maybe you're not in the Discord. Okay, hold on. MLM is fraud. I'll react to some Glenn videos because we haven't been going too long. All right, here we go. So. Um, thank you for blessing me. He's using the chiller font. You win a chance to be featured in a video with positive moral values. Yes. Tell us a bedtime story. Okay. This is what we're going to look at. So this is the, yes. Okay. So here we go. I don't know. Hey, Glenn, if you're watching this and I'm pretty sure certain you are, stop fucking dropping these clips. Drop the full convo for fuck's sake. Here we go. This is Scott Johnson. There's I am not scared of always Marco. There's Marco does not scare me. Let's check this one out. Um, you know, where's glasses playing hockey? You know, you know, you know, where's glasses playing hockey? I'm sure he got shoved around quite a bit. Um, I'm a guy that got sued by a multi-billion dollar a year company and won. I am not afraid of Marco in any way, shape or form. He's Thanks. just so stupid. Sorry, you, you were sued by the Amway Corporation, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And I won. By the way, Mars, you can mute Discord notifications and only turn on Discord notifications for when I ping everyone or for when your name is directly pinged or added. That way, you're not getting spammed with notifications all day. <laughs> and here's the here's real kicker. Most of the time, not just MLMs, but even non-MLM lawsuits, when it ends in a settlement, the usual uh, result is everybody clams up. Nobody says anything, you know, no comment and that sort of thing. And when I negotiated with Amway, I said that the settlement must be able to be made public. And really? they agreed to that. They agreed to that. So it's on my websites. Uh, you can read the actual settlement that I had with Amway. And there's no other conclusion that you can come to other than I won. And, and so, you know, Marco doesn't phase me at all. I mean, it's kind of funny that he thinks he does. Um, but he's, like I said before, he's a nothing burger. I mean, he thinks he's something, but he's nothing. Um, he, he I, might, I might have to start a restaurant chain when my YouTube channel gets big enough. Start investing in a restaurant chain and call it Nothing Burger. Just in honor of Scott Johnson. He's delusional, basically. Okay, so, so, so basically, you've addressed it, you addressed it once, and that's it. You've now moved on, and you're, you're saying you're unconcerned. You're not upset by your face being revealed. Your family's not concerned about it at all. Is, is that accurate? Is your wife concerned, for example? No, I think I addressed this a week ago. Yeah. She's not concerned at all. I'm not concerned at all. Uh, I, I've been doxxed at least twice in the past. Yep. It didn't concern me then. It doesn't concern me now. Um, and it, 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 again, it's just a nothing burger. It's, it, it's a non-accomplishment. And the most important thing is that he's focusing in on things that really don't matter. He's so pissed that I showed his face. So pissed. All right, then there's another one called Glenn defends Fitzpatrick and Marco after Scott calls them clueless. This one's longer. This one's 10 minutes. So y'all are getting some juicy, juice, juiciness here. What up, Daisy B? What's poppin'? Mars says, it's the temptation to just hang on Discord with strangers all day that will do my productivity in. Fair enough. 
make it a vegan restaurant and there's literally nothing in the burger. <laughs> the Batman and Robin of anti MLM. What up, Dylan, honey? Marco's delusional, but he called something a nothing burger. Right? Thumbs up the ting, by the way, y'all. All right, let's check this out. This is Glenn's other video called Glenn Defends Fitzpatrick and Marco after Scott calls them clueless. And Scott is going mad in these comments trying to, like, uh, you know, argue with people and defend his, defend his case and whatever, so... Some of them I can't see for some reason. Okay, let's check this out. Burgers yes. served with Pringles or Tex Cup fries. Wow, Mingles Pringles? Crazy. Here you go. Yeah, as far as uh, Marco looking up to Fitzpatrick, Robert Fitzpatrick. We're reacting to Scott Johnson from Losing Fortunes Radio talking about me on, the sh on Glenn... And our Australian friends show, I guess. I, they keep doing these calls, and get, Glenn keeps uploading them to his channel. And, uh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Patrick, and a lot of the other anti-MLM Huns do as well. Uh, the guy just doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, he was the first on the scene, and that's how he has his position. But he's never been in an MLM. He was in an uh, airplane game back in the 1980s, which is a productless pyramid scheme um and he's never been in an mlm so he just doesn't know and more importantly he doesn't want to talk to somebody like me who has been in an kylie this is for staying on the live after almost getting off also this is my proof that i am a loyal cult member after being questioned by you in the discord call the other day <laughs> when people join the discord voice chat with their camera off i don't know i never know thank you joey k appreciate you <laughs> Thank you. Th guys, honestly, it is amazing. Even if we hit $100 of this dono goal, 15 some more dollars to go, being 125th of the way through is like pretty amazing. So I got to thank you guys for that. MLM. And Little Winky Junior Kids Meals. Oh my God. Tool Scam special on Saturdays. Tool Scam Tuesday? At, at <laughs> Tool Scam Tuesday. Welcome. Hi, welcome to Nothing Burger. Do you want to try our, tu our Tool Scam Tuesday special? Our always stupid special? <laughs> Make it a whole restaurant. Somebody needs to develop the lore on this. Describe things as far as how they actually work versus somebody. Every burger order comes with an independent business agreement. So funny. Just guessing at it. Um, and probably the biggest thing in his book, and I could list a whole laundry list of different things that he gets wrong, but the biggest thing in my mind is how he talks about the endless chain and saturation. And all people have to do is go to the Juromar case against the FTC. It's G-E-R-R-O-M-A-R, Juromar. Uh, Google that plus FTC, and you'll see that the judge completely rejected the argument from the FTC that this Jeromar company was capable of saturating, and he just threw it out. In fact, he, he mocked them. He made fun of the FTC lawyers. If, if he wasn't a legal guy, he would say, you're stupid, because it was a stupid argument. It, it had nothing to do with reality, and judges don't look at fantasy. In fact, he even said the words to the effect of, we don't live in a fantasy land. Um, and so it's just ridiculous. By the way, guys, I have good news. Somebody, correct me if... Uh, on the name, somebody was in the chat. Somebody purchased, um, somebody purchased Ponzinomics using my affiliate link, which is in my description, and I made one dollar and seventy-one cents. Come on now. Come on now. You see it? You see it? You see it? So hit, hit that link up. Don't play with me. We're getting rich, rich over here. Rich, rich. All right. Ridiculous. It's not just narco. It's all the other anti-MLM Huns that love uh, Robert Fitzpatrick, and they have no reason to believe what he says. Now Ming Monday, yeah. Jerry Reyes, there's no more forest fires where I'm at, thankfully. It was a beautiful day today. All the smoke has passed over to y'all, pretty sure. If you bring three friends, you get 30% of their food. 
Will Nothing Burger have good retail sales? Toonie Tool Scam Tuesday. Would you like to sign up for our always stupid loyalty card? <laughs> Administrative law judge, like the one who decided the Amway case, correct. If they order three burgers, you get overrides. So funny. Now, the FTC also tried that argument in the Amway case. The BV burger, business volume. <laughs> we could just keep going. We could keep going all day. Case in 1979, and the judge similarly rejected it. And to my knowledge, the FTC has not tried that again. So that's, you know, one thing that, that Fitzpatrick gets wrong every single time. I actually do want to, you know what? I have a new merch item uh, coming out. I wanted to actually do this as a product, merchandise product, but it's way too expensive to ship and I would lose money on every order at this point in my career. I wanted to do like a beverage, which was just water, but the branding of it was called like snake oil. And like it's it's literally advertised on the bottle that there is no medical benefits to it. It is just literally water, but call it snake oil. And uh, again, shipping water way too expensive. But I could, um, you know, put out mugs that say snake oil on them. So, you know, that would drive the point home too. It's like whatever is in the cup is just snake oil. I could do that too. Water bottles. Um, it's actually a great fucking idea. Yes. So, yeah. Walking into a room after that 171 deposit hits. Smells like broken here. Straight up. Scott, this idea that Robert Fitzpatrick was the first on the scene, I'm, it's completely wrong. I've just done some... I'm not sure if this video... I remember there was a, a, a comment that Scott put out saying he's not going to do more videos with Glenn or convos with Glenn if Glenn keeps adding commentary after the fact. But uh, yeah, here, we aren't doing another interview where you add comments after my part without me being able to respond. So I don't know if this was on the actual call itself or if Glenn just cut the video before Peter or Scott responded. Just ship the label and we can stick it on the water bottle. So funny. Narco Nectar. Wow, so many good drinks. Shyster Shake, Stupid Soda, Narco Nectar. Wow, come on. This restaurant actually slaps. If you fill out the loyalty card, do you get a paid vacation? Just have to pay for your own transportation, food, lodging, and entertainment. Yeah. If your friends don't eat their food, you get chargebacks. <laughs> do water bottles all buy one? Got you. I'm down. I'll take the narco meal and a side of mooka fries. Ha, <laughs> I could put together a sweet snake oil graphic. Ooh, send me that. Send me that. I keep all the profits though. All right, let's continue. Some research and Robert Fitzpatrick's first book was in 1997. Now, there were several books written on the Amway Corporation in the 1980s. The first example I can find. The Mooka milkshake, y'all are killing me. Empty bottle that says snake oil, add anything. That'd be good too. Mine was a book called Fake It Until You Make It. And this was written in 1982. This was written before Robert Fitzpatrick had ever even joined the airplane game. So the idea that Robert Fitzpatrick is the number one anti MLM on the planet is because he got in first is completely wrong. There were several people that were anti MLMers long, long before Robert Fitzpatrick. Now, they, they may not have followed the same um, course that today's anti MLMers do on YouTube, but there were several books, um, just these, just three of them. Amway, The Cult of Freight Enterprise, that was in 1985. Fake It Until You Make It, 1982. And Merchants of Deception. Now, it was written in the 80s. I can't find the exact publication date, but long, long before Robert Fitzpatrick was the number one most well-known anti-MLM on the planet. Um, and, and your point about he's never been in an MLM. Well, I don't think you need to be in an MLM to understand it. Just the same as you don't need to be an ex-basketball or even to have played basketball to be very knowledgeable on basketball and, and to be a very good basketball commentator. Um, and, and I think in many sports, often the very best, the most knowledgeable commentators are guys that have never, ever played the sport before. Um, you, you talk about Robert not speaking to people like you. Well, I've watched several videos on YouTube where yeah, I said, don't forget Suck Chain Saturday special. <laughs> Text Tuesday, stupid Saturday, Suck Chain Saturday. Oh my God. 
Mini inch Winkies, pigs in a blanket. Fitzpatrick Frapp. <laughs> Can I get the unread special, please? The Goon Gulp. You guys, somebody has to be writing all this down. Please, Legend Gaming or Beyond or somebody. Fuck. Mars says, it's fine. I just like drawing and design. Oh, thank you, Mars. You're so sweet. Appreciate you. <laughs> well, wrong one. Aww. I meant to click that one. Not that you're fucking poor. Um, the Goon Gulp. Suck Chain Saturday. If your arguments are solid, it shouldn't matter if commentary is added afterwards. So true. Try our new Big Tech Sloppy Scott Nothing Burger with a side of Mingles Dingles mashed potato and a large Johnson Juice. <laughs> Johnson Juice. <laughs> Stupid. Ah. This Aussie is our friend, Daisy. We like this Aussie. The, sh the restaurant should be built as a pyramid, yeah. The 5x5x5 five by five by five burger. It's like five patties, five toppings. <laughs> You know how, oh my God. You know how Wendy's has the four by four where it's like $4 for four items. We could have the five by five where it's like, oh my God, you guys are killing me. The goon glizzy. Don't forget your why Wednesday. Oh my, yeah, why Wednesdays? Oh, nothing burger play place, the void. The sunken place. The sunken play place. Oops. <laughs> We don't say prices. We say opportunity investment. Your opportunity investment today is twelve sixty seven. So funny. Mingle singles, the five by five burger, mini inch winky French fries. Oh my god. Honey, you barely touched your mini inch winkies. Would you like to super shice that? <laughs> you want it in shy shyster size? Shyster sized. Shy yeah, shyster size me. Five by five by five burger is made with impossible burger because it's impossible. <laughs> oh, taproot Thursday. Oh my god, that's funny, Allie. Taproot. <laughs> Sorry. Taproot Tuesday. Taprooting is what they call the process of when you get someone so that you can gain access to their extended network and of family and friends. They are the root. So tap rooting is when you tap into the root of somebody's connections. You know, every MLM will tell you you're only one recruit away from your business exploding. You're one recruit away from being a millionaire because that one recruit might bring you the person who brings you five people who brings whatever, whatever. Taproot Tuesday. That is so fucking funny. Oh my God. Specs is crazy. Specs is crazy. Specs says, Silica don't miss. What else he say? Five hot dogs, one bun. Our team members will greet you and take your order by saying, write that down. Oh my God. Yeah, literally. Write this down. When you, when you order at the restaurant, you tell the waitress, write this down. I want a, I want a Ming Mocha, a Fitzpatrick Frap, a 5x5 five five burger, and I'm going to shyster size that. Oh, my God. The sunken play place. Too funny. Robert, Fitzpatrick has spoken to people who have been in MLMs. People just <laughs> make sure the restaurants only open in areas where there are many other competing restaurants. No, no, no. Open up multiple chains of the of the restaurant next to each other just to drive the point home. <laughs> like you with your exact or similar experiences. He does he's open to talk to people. He doesn't just talk to the big anti MLM YouTubers. He actually speaks to a lot of the smaller ones too. So I I feel like the How Burger how hamber the how hamburger? Ponzi num Ponzi num nums, yep. Instead of Ponzi nomics, good nice. Like you're wrong there. Um, uh, we we come back to this point that men you have argued about endlessly for a long time. This is this endless chain. Um, I, I think your your argument is that with the endless chain, well, it's not going to happen because everybody is going to quit. Therefore, <laughs> sorry, Ali, you killed me with that one, bro. Taproot Thursday. <laughs> When your order is ready, your buzzer thing they give you goes, Marco, Mark. <laughs> Marco, Marco, Marco. Oh, my God. This is, the lore is so good. 
Type a one in the chat for ten percent your next ten percent off your next order of tax tots. <laughs> tax tots. Oh, chicken list, chicken strips. You guys are killing me. Or it's a bad argument, but the point is. Please pull up to the second level. I mean window. If everyone was to to join and to stay in. Every time you fill out one of the loyalty cards, you get ranked up. You would run out of people. It's unsustainable. You cannot just have five recruiting five, recruiting five, recruiting five. If it was Ooh, I'm getting a phone call back from one of the numbers I called. Hello? 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 Hi there, is this Terry? Hey, Terry, this is Mike calling you uh, from, from Surrey. Oh, Mike calling me from Surrey? Yeah, are you in Surrey? Yeah, I'm in Surrey. You're going to answer the number. Oh, I'm sorry. It said that the voicemail was not, uh, not initialized, so I just had to wait for you to call me back. Yeah, yeah. No problem, Mike. I just moved, I I just moved to Surrey from Edmonton, and, I, and before I left, I went to a... Uh, presentation a, a Raja Daliwal uh, presentation I saw on Zoom but I but I told them I'm moving to Surrey so they recommended you instead and so I'm just trying to get in contact with you about uh, WFG okay when uh, can we meet when can we meet uh, could we could we do a Zoom meeting potentially because my my work schedule is pretty unforgiving We could do a Zoom meeting? Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I will text you. Okay. Uh, I couldn't answer your call because I was getting a massage done. So. Oh, no worries. Hard. How was the massage? It was good? <laughs> very good, yeah, very good. Awesome. All right, well, I'll, I'll chat with you soon, Terry. Yeah, you let me know. And uh, when you're available, give me one or two different times so I can make sure... I can adjust your time and meet with you, okay, Sa on Zoom. Sounds good. Thank you, Terry. No problem. Have a great evening. You too, sir. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. He's for sure going to know that that's me. Um, He's going to find out in the next, easily in the next day or two. <laughs> How was the massage? Wow, that's so stupid. Sorry that you guys couldn't hear. I mean, the mic doesn't pick up the phone audio very well, and his, his quality was really bad. All right. Let's continue with this lore we're building. Um, LaSalle, thank you. Seed money for the upcoming Nothing Burger restaurant chain. Yeah, first round funding, baby. Who wants to be involved in this ground floor opportunity? Get 50 Johnson hot dog, but it's half an inch. Get 55 cents off when you join us for Trauma Dump Tuesdays and tell us your deepest vulnerability you want us to exploit. Oh, my God. Monate Ming Mondays, Independent Burger Starter Kit. You could have a Ray Higdon dessert called Hig Dongs. Workers would here wear cowboy hats. I've hired and fired myself three times at Nothing Burger. Burger Starter Kit just comes with literature on what goes in a burger. So funny. Len Len says she could hear him. So there you go. Ask if he got a happy ending. <laughs> Ask him if they did a suck chain ending. Thank God I didn't end the stream, actually, because I would have missed that callback. Wow. Tex Johnson is calling him now. Yeah, for sure. For sure, Tex will call him. Panda, actually, good call, because I showed the number and everything, too. Wow, who calls back every number that calls them? 99% of calls are spammers. Well, when you're trying to recruit, baby. Do you have one-party consent laws? Absolutely. Here at Nothing Burger, we strive to suck in excess. So true. That's a reference to the Eric Worre Pitbull interview we reacted to on a stream a couple months ago. I'm only interested in a ground beef opportunity, really. Wow. But I'm... Tss. No ground floor opportunity, just ground beef. I see what you did there. Um, raise your hand if you want to shyster size this. 
Raise your hand. Oh, yeah, the, the uh, Robert Hollis thing. Raise your hand if you got no money. LOL, when I said, I got a comment that made me laugh on that video. Somebody quoting me saying, he raises his hand more than Hitler. <laughs> Insane. You don't hire at Nothing Burger. You have to prospect. Every time you take an order at the drive-thru, got to remind the customer every 10 seconds you're not a scam. You could have a dance night called Mingles Jingles. Y'all are killing me. Okay, let's finish this Glenn thing. It was to work that way, which it wouldn't because companies like Amway Junk, the product's overpriced, everyone will quit. But if people were to stay in, you would run out of people. Um, and then you talk about it, it's not possible to be saturated. Now, Amway and these other MLM companies, they claim, they claim to be direct selling companies. Now, there are far, far too many direct sellers out there. There's literally thousands, thousands of them. It's saturated. There cannot be thousands and thousands of them all making huge money at the same time. There quite simply is not enough demand for direct selling for it to be the current number. It is well and truly saturated. Um, and you, 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 the last point is you talk about the FCC is not tried again. Well, not in the USA because quite simply, the FT, the um, Amway Corporation in particular has paid off every single major political party in the United States of America. They have paid them off. They have paid off people and got people into the FTC. Um, and that is why in America there has been no further action and the FTC has sat idle and allowed these companies to, to destroy the lives of so many people and to defraud so many people. Um, overseas, though, this is not the case. The MLM industry has been closed down in China. Um, I'm just going to give two examples here. I could probably talk for another 10 minutes about other examples. Uh, there was a major case in the UK in 2006 where the UK Trade Commission went after the Amway Corporation in a big way and they revealed that 99.7% of everyone in the UK who had joined the Amway Corporation had lost money. Um, so you're wrong when you say that the FTC, well, you're kind of right, the FTC haven't done much, but there's been action in other countries and the reason why the FTC hasn't done it again is not because the 1979 case was flawed, but because companies like the Amway Corporation have become very political and they've donated a lot of money. That, that's the real reason. <laughs> you guys' comments. Still, still building up the Nothing Burger lore. I hope somebody's writing this shit down. Uh, now that I'm an Ubermensch independent burger bandit, I have a 2001 Dodge Neon Nothing Burger company car. Oh my God, Silica. Employees wear Tommy Bahama shirts and cowboy hats. Every table in the restaurant is its own business. The waiters are their own boss, and you have to buy starter kits to get the menu. Open up a car wash next door where they clean you out real nice. Each order comes with a little toy. That is the how lady scolding you. Wow, yeah, you press a button. It's like a little Jessica Higdon toy, and it says, ha, onion tings. Oh, my God. Simple compensation plan for every employee. I remortgaged my house to go to the first Nothing Burger Palooza team building event. Order a Ming Mint milkshake. A Ming Ming Mint. <laughs> Onion tings. Oh my god. Shrimp scam pee. Wow. Do we know what state Glenn lives in? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure he said it to me on our Facebook call a couple weeks ago, but I don't remember. In order to make to stay employed there, you have to make a minimum lunch purchase every day. So funny, dude. So funny. Actually, I'm going to post a picture in the Discord right now because it's funny. We're talking about nothing burgers and like making these jokes about nothing burgers. I actually made burgers for lunch earlier today. I'm going to post a picture in the chat of the nothing burger uh, prototype that I made earlier today. The first nothing burger. This is actually a two by two burger. Dude, the burgers I've been making at home uh, recently are so fucking stupid good. Like... Homemade burgers always seemed in the past like they turn out worse than I planned them in my mind, and I've solved it. One, don't use frozen patties. Just buy ground beef, roll it up, press it very flat, very thin in the pan. Salt, pepper, and you can put a little mustard or whatever burger sauce you used on the one side before you flip it. Flip it, that, that bottom side will get real crispy. You could also do this beforehand. You could sauce up or mustard up both sides so it gets crispy on both sides. But make it really, really flat. Let, let it cook. Put the cheese on, on top. Let it melt. Then you need to use brioche buns. Sesame or without, it doesn't matter. But the biggest problem with burger buns that you buy from the store is that 
One, there's way too many buns that you're never going to use. I mean, unless you're having a family barbecue, but then still you have the issue of the fact that the buns are so dense and so shit. Yet, get brioche buns. They're softer, they're but more buttery, they're lighter, and when you grab the burger, it's not like a mouthful of bread. That's step two. Step three is whatever toppings you're going to use, thin. Lettuce, th julienne. Not even chopped, julienne the lettuce. So thin, paper thin. That way when you put it on the bottom bun or whatever, it's like, it's basically still flat. You don't have the patty sliding around everywhere. And, uh, and that's it for sauce. You know, I'll tell you, the sauce that I've been making for the burgers is literally a mix of ketchup, mustard, mayo, a little bit of hot sauce, and pickle juice because I'm using pickles on the burger as well, pickle slices. So I take some of the pickle juice from the jar, just a couple spoonfuls of it, and mix it in with the sauce to give that acidity. Wow, wow, wee wah. It is so fucking good. The picture, I just posted a picture in Discord, by the way. I'll share it with you guys here, because boy, oh boy, is it a slapper. Where is it? Discord. Here we go. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> That literally looks like something from In-N-Out. And by the way, this one is, uh, I fucked this up. I meant to put the lettuce on the bottom bun, uh, but I just, I wasn't thinking and I ended up putting it on the top. But hello, even if you don't like, I mean, what are the toppings I got on here? White onion, sauce, two patties, very thin with cheese in between both. So two cheese slices, little thin sliced tomato, pickles, thin sliced lettuce, and that's it. Hello. I body bagged it. I am the goat. Don't fucking play with me. All right. Oh, wrong button. All right. Um, Robert Fitzpatrick, in my mind, is the most knowledgeable um, man on the on the MLM industry on the planet. I've just actually watched, doing some research on how to respond to what you said just before. Listen to an interview with Robert Fitzpatrick uh, on a local. I think it was a local radio station. I'm going to upload it onto this channel shortly. It is outstanding. Customer survey on the receipt just says, do you like me? So fucking funny, bro. Where is it? Do you like me? <laughs> His knowledge of the multi-level marketing industry is, in my opinion, second to none. I, I, can, I can kind of understand your frustration, though, with him in that you have... The Ming Melt. There can't be multiple Ming products. and You can't have the Ming Ming mil Mint Milkshake and the Ming Melt. It's too much. You gotta bring in other people like the Eric Worry, the Worry something, or the Colleen Nichols something, and the Jesse Lee Ward something. Very focused on the Amway tool scam. Um, Robert Fitzpatrick does not spend a lot of time talking about the Amway tool scam. I think this is giving real anti burger tool scam rant vibes. Yeah, so true. Employees can only stay if they recruit new employees. Yeah. Tool slam. My mouth is actually watering, says Mars. <laughs> but what do you think about the burger, though? Ah! He's... Thanks, Marco. So funny. I made a zinger right there. That is in part because he's talking about MLMs as a whole. He's not just... Marco, all right, y'all, I'm done. 30 minutes later explaining how to make burgers, yep. Literally, y'all y'all made me stay on the stream. Where's the bag? I do this for bag. <laughs> I mean to help people. Talking about Amway. So a lot The secret sauce at Nothing Burger is good, only when done right. Fuck, I couldn't I can't believe there was this much lore about burgers. One of these are the MLMs. They've got tools, but the tool scam is nowhere near as big and as bad. Caramelized onions good too. Pickled red onions for burgers bars. Damn, y'all y'all got me bricked now talking about these burgers. There's a bite model joke here somewhere. Wow. So funny. I even wrapped it, yep. Once the burger agent brings in three friends and makes three burger sales, they become district burger leaders and get paid 50% minimum wage. Let's get a little more American with it and have a loaded Johnson on the menu. I took a full load. Remember when he said that? Ming Donald's is a separate restaurant. Oh my god. That is what it is in the Amway Corporation. It does not do the same sorts of damage. Jesse, the... Jesse Lee Juice. All right, this is almost over. There's a minute left. Come on, let's get through it. Amway Tool Scam does, which I think is in part why he'd spend talking about. Uh, my, my view is that 
in the multi market industry is damaging with or without the tool scam. The Amway tool scam makes it far, far worse. Mm -hmm. My view is people who join Amway actually experience more damage <laughs> and they're hurt more than people who join other MLMs simply because Amway has got this out of control. I would call it an evil tool scam. So we agree that we're probably a little bit, both a little bit frustrated with uh, Fitzpatrick about the Amway tool scam more, maybe for underestimating it, but that does, that does not take away the fact that <laughs> his knowledge about the MLM industry as a whole, in my view, is second to none. And I think Marco agrees with me on that. And I think Marco's spot on. And yeah, I, I really think you need to uh, listen more closely to what Robert is saying and maybe not focus so much on what, focus more on what he is saying as opposed to what he's not saying. Because I, I know you're frustrated at the fact that he doesn't talk much about the MY tool scan. Yeah, Scott. Shut up, bitch. Shut up, bitch. Okay, you guys are killing me with these comments. Jesse Lee Juice. And then uh, Mars says, you can't sell enemas at fast food joints. It's a no-go on the Jesse Lee Juice. Worry Waffle Fries. Accepted. I like that one. Worry Waffle Fries. You can never say, your employees can never say the name of Nothing Burger. Just give out plastic pens with vague names. The jingle would have something like, so crispy and tasty. Colleen Nichols Dirty Pickles. Oh, my God. When they ask how they want their patties, they can have it gaslit. Wow, yeah, that's perfect. Like, you know, Burger King says they have flame broiled. Well, our burgers are gaslit. The flat out wrong wedge salad. So stupid. Um, McDonald's attacked by the FTC fried chicken. <laughs> um... Jesse Lee rhymes with FTC. Let's just, let's not skip over that. Um, income closure statement is the tray paper liner, but it's written super small. It's like a crossword puzzle to disguise it. When you leave the restaurant, the waiter will ask you to go thumbs up the thing on Yelp. Boss Babe Burger. The Eric Sunny Side Up Egg Burger. Don't have a clue, cookie. Work from home special. Oh my God. Yeah, the catering is called working from home. Let me see. If I go to the Building Fortunes Radio bingo, maybe there will be some ideas that we can get for, uh, for, for you know, burger menu things. Five by five, we got that. Um, ooh, yeah, I, the, maybe the bag that we serve the food in says I got to get the bag on it. Um, area vice president. <laughs> uh. Scott says a few years ago, Scott spends a long time on a short story. Scott giggles. <laughs> uh, the anti MLM Hun hot dog. Hun, hun hot dogs. Hun dogs. Could do something with that. Back to you, burger. Wow. The back to you, burger. <laughs> Fuck. The pyramid pie. Sister, <laughs> sister. <laughs> I know Panda will like that one. System brings the food, buddy. <laughs> System brings the food. Yeah, the customer is just like sitting there for an hour waiting. Some Indian guy, Hartage, comes up to them. System brings the food, buddy. Oh my God, the he 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 hamburger. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is so funny. Where's the laugh? <laughs> <laughs> System brings food, buddy. So fucking stupid. Wow. The tool scam witch. Boss babe buns. Y'all are fucking killing me with this, bro. Killing me with this. Oh my god. Somebody, I hope somebody made like a spreadsheet of all of the, uh, different nothing burger see i don't care if scott and peter stop talking about me we are going to continue to expand this lore we made a bingo card to play along with building fortunes radio we did the investigation that discovered or rather uncovered scott johnson's real face um we've now created a fictional restaurant based on the lore of me versus building fortunes radio so uh <laughs> 
Yeah. That laugh is the door chime sound when people walk in. I feel like Marco could also be the sound or balls. Winky. Your little mini what, can you hear this? Winky. Your little mini inch winky. You know. Balls. Marco. Do you remember Marco? You know everything, remember? Remember Marco, you know everything. <laughs> Do you like me? <laughs> oh my god. That's haram. If somebody orders pork, that's haram. That's what you hear. Marco, go spruce up. So stupid. Do you like me? Do you like meat? <laughs> System brings food, buddy. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Uh, home burger kids, so you can make as much as you want in your free time. Crab Rangoons. Every time someone leaves a tip, you play Scott's Giggle, and then you play, you're broke, you're fucking poor. For USA folks, like Moe's ring, like Moe's rings the bell when you leave the tip. So funny. Yeah. Somebody tipping. You're broke, you're fucking poor. So funny. We need a full business plan. The drug addled goons gumbo. Senior Scamming Sundays specials. Oh, my God. We serve billions and billions every day. Billions and billions. What would the birthday celebration song or tune be? We only sell Coke products. The ghost spruce up sound effect plays when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> Try one of our tasty treats off our last nail in the coffin menu. We have made fresh daily team pie. Raspberry unread tart, gulab, Johnston, jamun. Oh my god. Ghost Kitchen franchise win. I swear to god, man. We need to get some more bag at the Streamlabs and wait, I will actually start this up. This is crazy. Time Freedom Taters. You fry and dress up the tots yourself, but whenever you want, so it's cool. I don't want to end this stream, but man, I have nothing else for tonight. So freaking funny. All right, I'm going to end it there because we've already been going two and a half hours, which I've honestly streamed. I did last year. Uh, so every year on the like yearly annual celebration of me streaming for the very first time, it was like August 20-something, 2019 was the first time I ever live streamed on YouTube. So every year on that date, damn, it's actually coming up in two months. Every year on that date, I do a big special stream called GoonCon. Okay, the first year, GoonCon, I got like a bunch of balloons and decorations that I set up around my apartment, and it was like a special stream. GoonCon 2 was during COVID. Uh, I think GoonCon 1 was as well, but GoonCon 2 was less special. I had some technical difficulties, so it was just, it was a, I had a sign and decorations, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. GoonCon 3, I went all out. I decorated my whole place. I can reconfigured my living room, like streaming setup. Uh, my cousin Gabby with, was with me for a lot of it. There was special guests. I had like Fidel from my I Am Academy video call in as a special guest. Uh, my friend Philip, who I started doing YouTube with back in 2018. My old roommate Bannon, who people from my live streams uh, back in like 2020 when I lived with him, he would make appearances. My cousin Gabby, who I used to stream with all the time. And uh, it was a 24 hour stream ton of decorations, like a lot of fun. I did a lot of stuff on that stream. And uh, so coming up here on the August, uh, in, at the end of August, will be GoonCon 4. So we definitely, you know, if some of these ideas, if somebody writes these ideas down, I would love to like prepare and maybe label some of these treats and have like these, some of these, uh, you know, Losing Fortunes Radio themed items at GoonCon 4. I can't promise it's gonna be a 24 hour stream again, but um, it was a lot. I've, I mean, I've done that. I do, I've done streams that lasted seven hours, six hours, five hours, four hours. Uh, so Marco gets drunk at GoonCon. I did have a few drinks. So yeah, it, it could be fun. Don't forget about Balumbak, August 31st. So true. GoonCon 4, baby. Time Freedom Fries. So stupid. Always stupid narco coke. Those musical urinals I sent you go in the bathroom. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Actually, it's all just the Trump one. Someone doesn't know what they want when they get to the window counter, so you play the... 
<laughs> That's so funny, Lindy. If someone doesn't know what they want when they get to the window or counter, you play this. That you, um, you, <laughs> had, you, 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 you could, you do, you, you want, you, you could do so, you, you, so you, 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 you want, oh my you want God. him to do you so much, you could do anything. <laughs> So fucking rude. It's like, how long is that clip? Hold on, let me see. 14 seconds. Somebody gets up there, uh, and you just hit that. Oh my God, Lindy, that is so fucking funny, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my goodness. So fucking funny, Lindy. Wow, you bodied it with that one. The stuttering kid. <laughs> uh, building Fortuna sandwich. Wow. The toy should be a bear, reminiscent of Dr. Patchup, but wearing a Losing Fortunes radio shirt. Yeah, that's the Mucha Bear. That's our mascot. Like, A&W has the Root Bear. We have the Mucha Bear. Can we cosplay? Yes, you guys can cosplay. Maybe for GoonCon 4, I'll do a big call-in segment, too, where people can call in and <clears throat> hang out. <clears throat> the Shill Grill. Make a nothing burger meal with stickers and labels and unwrap and eat it. I will. Definitely need an after party that night. Oh, shit, I closed it. Where are you? Um, or stream exclusive Nothing Burger hats. Ooh, that'd be cool. GoonCon 3. Yeah, GoonCon 3 we did. GoonCon 4. Don't forget to big up size your Johnson juice. Yeah. Shyster size it. Wow. The drive through speaker plays episodes of Building Fortunes Radio. Plot twist, the sound quality is better. So funny. Goon dating show? Not allowed. Sorry, guys. All the goons have to reserve, have to preserve their, uh, their virginity and their purity for the emperor because this is a cult. And, uh, you know, I have to be able to um, exploit and manipulate my cult members any way I see fit in the future should I decide that. And so goons are not allowed to date each other, unfortunately, unless they were already dating before they joined the cult. It's just the way it is. I was thinking that convict pick of Peter. <laughs> the convict picture of Peter, but with the Wendy's girl hair. Post that in Discord. So funny. I'm so full, I don't think I can even touch my warry wookie waffle. Oh my god. The ambient lobby music is the BFR intro music. Yes. <laughs> Need a nice Goon Radio and Goon Court segment for GoonCon 4. For GoonCon 4, you should play some voice-to-text reviews of this restaurant. Goon dating has went terribly wrong in the past. I forgot about that. I forgot I did a Goon dating thing. I'm already married. Does he have to join? Yes, KB. I'm sorry. He has to join. He does. He has to join the cult. Tell him hit the Streamlabs link. Don't tell him what it's for. He's like, what are you making me spend money on? Just tell him. Tell him you joined a cult, and uh, it's better for everyone. He'll understand. Just have faith. Um, this is the most cursed business <laughs> idea. <laughs> Actually, the most cursed business idea is multi-level marketing, but fuck, this has been funny, you guys. You're the only ones that can take that from the goons in the cult. So true. So true. All right, you guys. Well, look, I'm done. I mean it this time, for real. Two and a half hours. That's a healthy stream. Uh, appreciate all the support. Um, a. Louise Mack, once again, wow, you are a monster for donating those, uh, gifting those 20 memberships. That's really amazing. Big up. Big up one time. Big up one time, A. Louise Mack. She's been donating like crazy. Um, and, you know, if you're watching this on replay, just know that the Streamlabs link is open 24-7, baby. If y'all want to hit that stream, that's link in the chat. You can do it whenever you wanna, you know. Um, goon, goon teen is a classic Canadian dish. Yeah, like poutine, nice. High school captain foot, high school football captain discounts. Guillermo Haro hot dog. Wow. Where do I buy the training tapes to get him caught up on the lore? Oh my god, he just gotta go back to the old streams. You know what I realized today was so funny is I have a stream from like a few weeks ago or maybe a month or two ago called uh, Help Me Shut Down WFG. Help Me Take Down WFG. It's two hours and 24 minutes long. And only the first 15 minutes is actually about WFG where I'm telling people to report it. 
And the rest of it, I realized, is literally, hold on, look. See, look at the chapters. Okay, look at the chapters. From 1504 on, it's just Losing Fortunes Radio all the way up until the end of it. I was like, I went scrolling through. I was like, what did I even talk about on that one? Nothing. Just Scott and Peter, basically. Oh, my God. Killing me, you guys. If you guys have more ideas, jump in Discord voice chat after this. Multi-level marketing. Donating like, cra like crazy. Donating like crazy. You said that like Christopher Walken. The people, everyone watching the live stream on YouTube, they're donating the money to me. <laughs> I got to work on my Christopher Walken. You know, it's crazy. The amount of people donating their money, you know, clickbait for real. Couponsy scheme. Wow, couponsy scheme. The toys are white cassette tapes. So funny. Or like a puzzle where the pieces don't fit together. A puzzle of a pyramid. Thank you, Anna Marie Fella, saying I'm making the world better. I appreciate that. Can I upsize my lotions and potions? Ooh, those, those could be toys too. Lotions and potions. At checkout, would you like to make a <laughs> would you like to make a donation to Always Marco? That's funny. And they're like, no, thank you. And you're like, sorry, it's mandatory. And you just take five dollars. <laughs> so fucking funny. Walk in is one of the five impressions. I do many impressions, bro. I do Al Pacino too, but my voice is a little hoarse right now. Bed and broke fast. I can't do it anymore, y'all. I'm out. Oh, top walking is one of the five impressions that the most annoying dudes at the college party does. So true. A double drive through that says good things on both sides, frankly. Oh, my God. <sighs> All right, y'all. I'm out. Peace out. Goon tax on the bill. Yeah, on every receipt, there's goon tax and the mandatory donation. The water would be perfect water. Yeah. Snake oil smoothie. Ooh, that's a good one. Write that down. Write this down. All right, you guys. Peace out. Appreciate it. Don't do drugs. See you on Friday. Peace. Marco. 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 I got to get the bag. Thumbs up the team. Let's go. <laughs> Marco. Marco. Play some more Marco. Peace out, y'all. Discord. Join the Discord. See you in there.